Work hard and live each day to the fullest. That is what life in Mondstadt is all about, isn't it? Everything is negotiable, except over time. You heard the lady. Everything is negotiable, except over time. Hey there, pretty kitties. I'm starting two seconds early because I don't care. Welcome to Mizzy Cat Gaming. It's Otter. Otter Cat Gaming. Because she's the one that's sleeping up here like a big slug. Hi, son. You're not even fully in the bed. I don't... What a weirdo. Um... Right. <laughs> uh, so... Yeah, I was gonna play Spirit Fair today. But today is garbage. And... I don't have it in me for those feels right now. So, we're gonna play Genshin instead. Um... Namely because I made the mistake... He did leave for someone, preferably orange, to join him. That's not going to happen. Um, I made the mistake of unlocking like a whole bunch of story quests. And I've been trying not to do anything with them because I was streaming. And so I've basically had to avoid almost all of the city of Mondstadt. So let's do some story quests. Oh, and just so that we're all clear of how much I've been trying to get it done, we do indeed have the staff of Homa. It's only level 60 because I'm lazy and need to uh, do this. I mean, I guess I can see if I can make these. I know I can buy these. Staff, yeah, no, right? Staff of Homo, Staff on Toma. Okay, let's see if I can make these real quick. I haven't done my commissions yet today either. Do I have the good commission? Of course I don't. One, two, three. Oh yeah, these all look like trash. All right, we'll do those later. We're not worried about that. And I may play Spirit Fairer. Yes, Ro. Uh, we may play Spirit Fairer in the back half if I feel a little bit better, but I don't know. All right. All right, Rosaria. So, we want four million thousand. Let's see. So, I could theoretically make these. If I make these, do I have anybody to give me a boost to that? I don't think I do. Who gives the boost on this? Probably somebody I just don't have access to at all. Whatever. Craft. All right, and I think that puts me... Yep, yeah, I'm still going to be one short. But that's fine. Because I think tomorrow, either tomorrow or Sunday, I can go out and get the other one I need. Might be no one. Eh, maybe. Oh, that's always possible. Shackles of the dandelion. And we're not doing that, no. Um, I still have... So we're, we're not even close to a wish. Um, but when we got the, the staff, Mondo, Albedo, Ayaka. Okay. So when I got the staff, I actually got Rain Slasher and two Mons Moons. So, like, I have a lot of four-star weapons right now. And I don't know what to do with them. Especially because I don't really have an archer. Mona gives a refund, Albedo. That's what I want. Okay, Albedo gets a chance to give extra. Because that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for extra. Um, 
Anyway, uh, it wasn't that. I was going for this because I have lots of this. Only 10% chance when it works. It's nice. Uh, and I could do, I'm, I'm trying to decide because I'm going to get the top level in the, um, battle pass. So I'm going to get the 680 gems from that. I'm trying to decide if I want to buy intertwines and try to get one more draw off of the, um, the character banner. But at the same time, it's like, so, excuse me, that's your foot, otter. That's my hand. Don't be like that. Alright. I'm just gonna go ahead and buy these while I'm thinking about it. Need 10% less goals. Yeah, no, like, and that's the thing. That's the only reason why I don't have it, because I was literally... Um, the only reason... Um, the only reason why I was, like, the only reason the staff didn't get finished yesterday, or whatever day that was, Wednesday, uh, when I was messing with it is because I was like, this is so boring that I can't do it anymore right now. Like, the lightning one is so easy for me to do with, with Ro, and now especially, uh, Toma as well. It's fine, it just is a slog. It doesn't, it's, it's, it's slow. I say, as it takes me an, uh, like a minute and 15 seconds, but it's, it's slow. It feels slow. So it was just, it was just like, I can't do this anymore right now. Uh, I have to go through and buy all these things. We'll worry about that later. Whatever. Okay. So. Our characters are more than sufficient for what we're going to be doing. Um, I think we're, so I need to work on Hu Tao. Hu Tao is where we're at. That's silly like. Silly churl, billy churl, silly billy hilly churl. Ooh. Our, uh, uh, we're working on, uh, Hu Tao, but I have to go and actually kill the Primo because I'm lazy and I hate fighting it because it's just, again, a slog. Uh, but we're not going to worry about that right now. Yes, she does talk when she does her dance. Um, no, what we have to worry about is all of these story quests I have unlocked. So, that's actually a good place to start. So, <laughs> um, story quests. Let me claim my commission key. So, I have unlocked Albedo, Zhao, Hu Tao, and Yula. Everywhere is like... Everywhere is a, is a time is a time bomb. Like I, these two are both in Mondstadt. This one is at the Wangshu Inn. Like every time I go anywhere, I'm just like, am I going anywhere close? I'm trying to avoid it. So we're gonna go to. I guess we could just start at the top. Let's just start at the top. The Spindrift Cell never returned to the sea. Let's try that. Let's start here. <clears throat> And this should be voiced. Shadow of the past. What is that? Do Albedo, you listen to the next patch, it's supposed to have something with them. Yes. And they're unlocked. We're probably going to do all of them today. So. But I don't know what this is. Oh, it's the thing we literally just started tracking. Okay. Hold on. All right. All right. Let's see here. Fling the door open. Thank you for coming on such short notice, Honorary Knight. I know you must be busy. Best thing about all this is it's all voice, so I don't have to read it. Well, to make a long story short, there's a particular matter at hand that the Knights requires your assistance with. 
Sounds like typical Master Jean to me. I have been meaning to have a word with you if the occasion presented itself. But as you know, Mondstadt's safety must always be my first priority. I have recently received multiple reports from the Knights of someone within the Lawrence clan having close dealings with the Fatui. Lawrence clan. Who is that? The Fatui? Again? The Fatui are, is always Paimon. Not again. Always. But who are the Lawrence clan? Same. There was a dark period in Mondstadt's history when the aristocracy ruled over the city. The hard-won freedom that followed with the fall of Decarabian was lost once again as slavery spread throughout the land. Slavery? The first Dandelion Knight, Vanessa, spearheaded the revolution that overthrew the old aristocratic system and established the Knights of Favonius, leading Mondstadt to become the city that you see today. The aristocrats that had oppressed the people of Mondstadt were none other than the Lawrence clan. Okay. Oh, Paimon gets it. So the clan's descendants are now scheming with the bad guys to carry out more dubious deeds. Seems very Scooby-Doo-esque, but okay. We suspect as much, though we have yet to obtain any solid evidence. The reason I summoned you here today is to ask you to help us further investigate this matter. Sounds like a nudge off for the Knights of Favonius to me. <sighs> Unfortunately, the Knights of Favonius and the aristocracy have been at odds with one another for as long as I can remember. Gee, I wonder why. We've already considered every possible way of resolving our differences, but it seems the descendants of the aristocracy remain antagonistic towards the Knights. Yep. No matter what stance we take when dealing with them, the outcome is always the same. Our efforts only result in adding Pretty more much. fuel to the flames. We could come knocking on their door on the grounds of a search warrant, but if the investigation were to come up empty, I'm afraid tensions and distrust would only increase. Well, how am I supposed to get in then? I'm a rando. All of our past <clears throat> efforts would have been wasted. But as an honorary knight, I technically also belong to the knights. You are in fact the best candidate to represent the Knights of Favonius, but you need not emphasize your role as the honorary knight. You are a traveler from a distant land, and you can approach the aristocrats in this way. Uh-huh. Once you come to friendly terms with the Lawrence clan, you should be in a good position to learn more of their possible connections with the Fatui. All right. Whoa. Leave it to Master Jean to come up with such a thorough plan. I mean, yes. <laughs> Perhaps such plans have become second nature after all the diplomatic issues I've dealt with. The name of the Lawrence clan member in question is Schubert. Lately, he can often be Schubert. found strolling near the northern city walls. It is said that he is difficult to get along with due to his temperamental disposition, but if we approach him calmly, then things should go off without a hitch. Makes sense to me since literally no one but Jean and Noel seems to remember you are an honorary knight. I mean, it's true. It is true. Uh, leave it to me. Thanks again for your help. If you run into any snags along the way, I'll do anything in my power to support you. Okay. All right. Look for the former aristocrat in the city. I do like that when you open these doors, it literally flings the door open. I like that. All right. Northern city walls. All right. So, because I know we're going to be running around in the city quite a bit, we're going to go ahead and trigger the the start of the other quest, because it's right over here, and it's what I've been trying to avoid triggering, like, a million years. So, we're going to literally just go ahead and trigger the other quest, so that it stops. And I can tell you that I know it's going to trigger when I get close. You know how I know? Look, it's Sucrose, just hanging out in the crafting area. And the crafting guy is gone. That's how I know. That's how I know. As soon as I get close, it's going to trigger. Hi, Sucrose. Ah, looks like Timaeus isn't here today. Hey, Sucrose. How you doing? Customers? Hi. Are you looking for Timaeus? No, no. Just strange for him to not be around. Paimon always sees him standing here. I see. He was called away by Albedo a little while ago. I was called over to attend to the store. 
Sucrose is so cute. I'm Sucrose, Albedo's assistant. If you have any alchemy-related queries, you could always ask me. I do my best to help. Again, with confidence. I... Actually, I'm not very good at this kind of thing. M my apologies. I don't get out too often. <laughs> I'm usually in the laboratory where there aren't many others to talk to. If you need any help, just call my name. If not, I'll... I'll be reading a book. Over there. I'll be reading a book. Over there. Mm -hmm. Thanks. No worries. We're all clued up on the basics of alchemy, aren't we? I might need a refresher. Hey. Aren't you the legendary traveler? The one who repelled storm terror? Legendary is a bit much. I've heard so many stories She is channeling you. me a little bit. Always wanted an opportunity to research you up close. Research me up close. Okay, Sucrose. It's a little bit inappropriate. Thank you, Paimon. Sorry, don't mind me. What am I saying? Still, you'd definitely be able to help Albedo. It is you, after all. There's that name again, Albedo. Is he also an alchemist in Mondstadt? I would hope he's an alchemist in Mondstadt, considering the fact that literally she said that he's her master slash she's his assistant. So, uh, I think I've heard of him. Apologies. I never introduced him. Albedo is the Knights of Favonius chief alchemist. He's also Timaeus and my teacher. But Paimon's only ever seen Timaeus teaching alchemy. So that means Albedo is a teacher teacher? Yes. Yes. He's dedicated himself to investigating the truth of this world and has made many an important breakthrough. We often get alchemists coming to Mondstadt from all over Tavat. Dog. Help. They say that the subtlest of guidance from Mr. Dog. Albedo helps him to solve the most unfathomable of problems. Wow! Paimon didn't know he was such a big deal. I mean, I knew he was a big deal just because I've been told he's a big deal. Mm -hmm. Still, it seems that he's encountered a problem in his research recently. Every time I see him, he has a concerned look on his face. Well, my knowledge of alchemy stops at basic crafting, so I don't know if I, I can help. That Albedo would like <laughs> to hear about your incredible exploits. I know it would bring him lots of new inspiration. Albedo seems to be kind of a big deal. Albedo is a true gentleman. He'll be sure to pay you back in equal measure for helping him out. Can he make Paimon stronger? Uh, Paimon doesn't need any help in that department. But if Albedo wants to pay Paimon back for helping him, a few more of might settle the score. <laughs> da, 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 da. Albedo and Timaeus will be conducting research in the mountains right now. I'd love to take you both to see him, but somebody has to attend R5 to R5 that Paimon, that's right. Let's go. Also, um, they're just hanging out in the mountains, I guess. I'm afraid you'll have to go to the entrance to the pass and look for him by yourselves. Look out for a refined gentleman with the presence of a true scholar. And, um, sorry. That's the best I can do. You'll have to do your best. Can't tell me what he looks like? Worrying. We got this. All right. Traveler observation report. Sucrose is a whole lot less nervous when she gets talking about alchemy and research, huh? Is that what all researchers are like? Anyway, Pretty much. Let's go and look for Albedo. He'll be the anime guy with the unique hairstyle and clothes, right? He'll be the one with the um with the vision that looks. You know, like he fell out of a fell out of an alchemy anime, um, or an alchemy game. By the way, if you if you don't play the alchemy games, you should. They're great. And uh, if you emulate or anything, or if you have an old PlayStation Two, um, I highly recommend Manakemia. Uh, it's very very good game. Old now, but still very good. Oh, gross. No thanks. No Nina jokes. Thank you very much. Uh, where the hell is this guy? Is he in this hanging out here? No, he's up here. We're gonna just gonna kind of just climb up the wall. I, you know, I know I could go up the stairs, but you know what? I, no, absolutely not. Well, he's not hiding in this back corner. Yeah. 
Or he is. That's not suspicious at all. Of course. This isn't suspicious at all. Huh? Who are you? Hello. We're here to... Hello? Uh, hello. Did I hear you correctly? Hello? Huh. And I suppose you think that you can simply strut up here and greet me in such an ignoble and vulgar manner? I don't think you understand who you're talking to. Given that I don't recognize you, I can only assume that you are a traveler of some variety. I'll have you know that you are speaking with THE Schubert Lawrence, a blood descendant of THE magnanimous nobility. Your eyes are a little bit bloodshot there, buddy. If you wish to address me, you'd best consider your words more carefully. Such nonchalant manners are inadmissible and will never do. Now, if you're somehow capable of understanding anything I've said, then you will get down on your knees, apologize for your negligent actions, and give me a proper introduction. That is the appropriate etiquette. Can I just put my sword through his head? Can I do that as an introduction instead? I feel like that's the more appropriate introduction. That's etiquette? Paimon's never heard of something so complicated before. Huh. In former times, when people knew their place and respected traditions, such conduct was only basic courtesy when greeting a nobleman. Is this where I point out that I'm actually kind of a god? So, if anyone should be getting down on their knees, it's not me. I'm just saying. And neglecting your manners would result in a swift whipping. You try it. Uh, but look at the world now. Rules have been thrown to the wayside and manners forgotten. Ah, I cannot bear to see such degradation. It's no wonder the aristocracy fell. What did you say? You dare question the dignity of the nobility? I'll have you know that though the Lawrence clan is in decline, myself and others of noble blood are looking for a chance to restore our rightful honor. You better be glad that the game won't give me the option to just break your finger, because pointing to me like that with being that close to me is not a good idea. Just look around. The people are unruly and undisciplined. I, however, strive to retain the elegance and etiquette of the nobility. After all, we are of a completely different breed by birth. I would also like to point out that I, I make commentary like this while I'm playing the game, but I am a completely non-violent person. It would probably make me very ill to actually say something like that to somebody's face. So. I, I live vicariously through my video game characters. <laughs> I haven't even said anything yet. Save your words. I find your manners and bearing repulsive. I have nothing to discuss with the likes of you. Besides, I am in no way obligated to instruct commoners on basic courtesies. Now I have more pressing matters to attend to. I'll take my leave. Oh, so this is what Master Jean meant by difficult to get along with. Oh, let's head back and talk things over with her. Yes. Some sort of something going on. My desk is slightly shaking. Might be mowing. Wouldn't think so, though. It's been raining. Might be a helicopter. Actually. Sounds well, like it. if it isn't the honorary night. I'm just on my way out to gather some intel. I didn't expect to run into you here. Oh, Amber remembers that I'm the honorary knight. I would hope. Yeah. So Amber remembers. Huh? Judging by your expression, you must have run into some trouble. Master Jean tasked us with a special assignment, but things seem to have run aground for the moment. It's a long story. No need to get down on yourself. Sometimes things just don't turn out as planned. Even I can't guarantee useful intel every time I'm dispatched. You just have to keep at it and never give up. That's Amber for you. <laughs> hey, why don't you let me try to help? What's the problem? Master Jean asked us to build a connection with someone named Schubert Lawrence. But it turns out that he's a peculiar character that doesn't listen to anyone. Especially Paimon. I mean, true. Aha, uh -huh, Schubert. I know him. Let me guess. He said you didn't have any manners. Sounds like you're no stranger to his rants. <laughs> I've been on the 
receiving end of his lectures many a time. The Lawrence clan can be very particular about such things. Yes, I do actually really like her manga outfit uh, as opposed to her game outfit. I love her manga outfit. It's really cool. Uh, you mean everyone in the Lawrence clan is just a big headache? I mean, that's what it sounds like. As aristocrats, they believe there should be a certain distance between themselves and common folk. Uh, I understand their thinking, but that's just not how things are anymore. However, there is one exception among the Lawrence clan. My good buddy, Eula. All right. Uh, buddy? That's right. Not only is she from the Lawrence clan, but she's also captain of the Knights of Favonia's fourth company. How could a member of the Lawrence clan join the Knights? Eula is special. She's not quite like the other members of her clan. She has her own beliefs and it shows. In other words, she doesn't really adhere to the strict rules and conventions of her family. I mean, I would hope not. However, she's still quite knowledgeable about dealing with the Lawrences. I'm sure you'll see what I mean if you meet her. All right. Hmm, that's strange. If you are a member of the Lawrence clan, then why would Master Jean choose us for the task? Couldn't she just ask Eula? Absolutely not. I guarantee you that she's been, like, disowned. Uh, well, it's a little complicated. Basically, the Lawrence clan has frowned upon the fact that Eula joined the Knights. Her family members don't particularly care for her. In their eyes, Eula is nothing but a traitor to the family. I guess that's understandable from their point of view. She's very easy to get along with. Just explain the situation, and I'm sure she'll help you come up with a way to get along with Schubert. In fact, I think she's out in the wilderness on patrol this morning. You should be able to find her around Storm Bear Mountains. Somebody else is just hanging out in the woods. Thanks, Amber. All right, you heard her. Let's go find Eula. Good luck, you two. I've got my own matters to investigate. Okay. Who would have guessed the Knights have a member of the Lawrence clan? Well, if you want to learn about the conduct of the Lawrence clan, who better to ask than one of their own family members? All right, so she might as well be thrown into the no more crowd, right? No, no, no. The the no more crowd is very spe very specific. Um. So do we want to go find Albedo or do we want to go find Eula? We're already tracking Eula, so it's pretty easy for us to go find Eula. I'm just my water. I can't just drink. I can't just drink my juice. I have to drink water too. Uh, I guess since we're already tracking, <laughs> well, since neither of you are any help, and I guess since we're already tracking Eula, we'll just go to Eula. I think I'm wrong. I think they are mowing when it's been raining for days. I think they're actually mowing. Sometimes I wonder about the general intelligence level of the people that are in charge of the groundwork, the yard work at my um at my uh apartment complex. And Otter is sleeping away from the camera with his white feet, so he just looks like a puddle, a puddle of black. He looks like the void. Alright. As we're doing other things, if we see materials and resources along the way, we will gather them. Just because. Alright. Oh. Hello, Fatui. Da 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 da. Oh, they're level 65. That seems unfortunate. Goodbye, goodbye. Oh, there's more of them. Oh, no. Whatever shall I do? Da 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 da. Oh, he's dead. Go ahead, I have a lot of health. Ooh. 
All right, I'm interested. Okay, I'm interested. You don't think twice before reaching for your sword, do you? Do you have any idea how long I've been tracking these targets? And now you get to stake a claim. You think you're stronger because you got to them first? Mark my words, vengeance will be mine. Sure, just make the choice between the two all the easier, why don't you, right? Uh, what? I'm sorry, vengeance? That's right. I heard the commotion and came as swiftly as I could, only to find you two already fighting the Fatui. Not only that, you are making quick work of them, too. Yes, uh, yes. If I didn't make my move, you would have been able to take all the credit. Uh, okay. Still, I'm glad you're unscathed. Confronting that number of Fatui at once can be dangerous. I'm actually quite used to fighting the Fatui. Uh, sorry, Pylon doesn't understand what you mean, but thanks for your concern. <sighs> Paimon in the clutch, I love it. Concern? Why would I be concerned for the safety of my arch enemies? Why are we arch enemies? I don't... Okay. Arch enemies? Wait a minute. You were saying how glad you were that we were unscathed a second ago. It's so that she can destroy us, Paimon. That's how arch enemies work. By which I meant, if you were injured, I'd have to escort two strangers guilty of stealing my targets all the way back to Mondstadt. There you go. Which would mean you'd cause me even more trouble. My vengeance would be swifter still. You are an odd one, aren't you? <laughs> So you must be Eula. Yes, that's me. Paimon thinks she's pretty strange. Although at least we can communicate with her. Paimon, you are also pretty strange, so, you know, stones in glass houses. You dare to call someone you've just met strange? Forget the aristocracy. That's rude even by normal standards. Speaking of which, how do you know my name? This is the honorary knight of the Knights of Favonius. And speaking of rude, we're trying to investigate an aristocrat named Schubert Morris. He's so obsessed with etiquette that he's not even willing to speak with us. <laughs> I understand now. That's my uncle, all right. But why do you mean to investigate him? He may be secretly involved with the Fatui. <sighs> I see. You have some nerve to faming a family member right in front of me. Oh my god. I will have vengeance for this too. Uh-huh, okay. No, no, no. This is an assignment from Master Jean. It's just an investigation. That's all. Aren't you worried about your own... No, we're not going to say worried. She's obviously not worried about anything. Aren't you curious? To the everyday citizens of Mondstadt, everyone in the Lawrence clan is scum. It's natural for rumors and unwarranted gossip to lead to such suspicion. Hard to avoid such a reputation when you're known as the ruthless rulers of old Mondstadt. Paimon, shut up! Oh, so that's what you think of me? Hm. Yet another transgression to avenge. Paimon, we're gonna have to fight her like 20 times. Shut up! We've only just met, and you've already given me three causes for vengeance. It's been a while since I've encountered anyone as interesting as you. Why do you seem so happy about it? I assume you need me to teach you the conduct of the Lawrence clan. Only then will you finally <clears throat> be able to communicate with my uncle, correct? That's right. Amber told us to come and talk to you. Well then, let's begin your training immediately. It'll be easier to train when we're back in Mondstadt. Will require other people. Right? We need our vengeance. Where's our vengeance journal? Uh, but aren't you plotting vengeance against us? We can put that aside for now. Besides, if it's the acting grandmaster's assignment, and Amber's the one who recommended me, I should comply. Comply, but, you know, vengeance is still on the table. Uh, All right. This is accurate, Paimon. We have met bigger weirdos. All right. Back to the city. <clears throat> Paimon's the biggest weirdo of them all. There you go. 
That is Outrider Amber, the Monstag Glider Champion to you. That's true. Alright. Hopefully that caught me before I took a bunch of damage. There's no time to spare. So we'll begin with our first lesson. Okay. Wait, hold on. There's something we need to clear up first. Otherwise it'll keep bugging us. I mean all about all that vengeance stuff. So that's still on your mind, huh? Maybe you're the ones who can't let things go. <laughs> Don't worry. There's a time and place for exacting vengeance. Besides, I'm not in the mood for any right now. Best save it for later. I mean, vengeance is a dish best served cold. Uh, you need to be in the right mood for vengeance. I already have a long list of vengeance. Or is that revenge? Exact. It's Even both. if I wanted to begin now, I'd have to start in the right order. Oh, okay. So she just has a massive vengeance list. And we're at the bottom of the list because we just got added. All right. Who knows how long it will be before I get to you. That's fair. <laughs> well, if you have so much to take care of, right? wouldn't it just be easier to give us a clean slate? We're on the temp list. Absolutely not. Stealing my targets, calling me a ruthless ruler, and suspecting my uncle. She... All worthy of vengeance in my eyes. She's definitely counting. But you needn't worry. At least, not whilst we're investigating this matter. I'm sure you're familiar with the phrase, A man of moral integrity fears no slanderous attack. Uh, no, but okay. If Uncle Schubert didn't commit any wrongdoing, then any such investigation will prove fruitless. <laughs> How's the first Tuesday of next October sound for you, right? We need to pencil it in. <clears throat> She'll get to us in three years, 27 days, 53 hours, and two minutes. <clears throat> but if he did commit a wrongful act, then he should bear the full punishment. I'm sure you understand. Uh, I think she's going to show up mid-boss fight in like 6-2 and stop your fight to fight you. Yeah, right? She's going to be like, wait, you must fight me instead. Uh, I think I'm starting to see what you mean. Actually, I think it would be really funny if it was like, I go in to do my weekly and fight Signora, and then Signora just like, starts to do her thing, and then all of a sudden, ninja slap to the side, into the wall, and Hula's there, and it's like, no, our time is now. <laughs> Good. Now, there are two key points that aristocrats attach great importance to. Your manner of speech, and your bearing. Let's begin with your manner of speech. Aristocrats have a very unique way of carrying conversation, even with mundane daily topics. Okay. Oh, Paimon's already learned some unique conversation. I feel like Paimon just shouldn't talk at all during this. Mark my words! Vengeance will be mine! Best moment. I don't, we haven't even finished the quest line. Best moment in it. There it is. Ha! Uh, huh? Yes. Not even close. And besides, it sounds strange. Hey! Paimon learned it from you! And don't you say not to call others strange? Fair. It seems you don't respect the rules of your own clan. Oh, Paimon, you're getting spicy. No, I've no need to trouble myself with such frivolous formalities. Here, allow me to demonstrate. For example, when greeting a friend, you could say, As the morning dew greets the coming dawn, so do I greet you, my dear friend. That's tedious. Uh, as the morning dew does what now? That's why you just need to not talk, Paimon. However, such a phrase may only be used during the morning hours. Also, the party with whom you're speaking must be of approximately the same status as you. Mm. Morning dew is not uncommon, so it expresses that friendship should not be measured by value. Yet also suggests that friendship between aristocrats is pure like water. Seems like a lot of work just to greet a good friend. Oh, no, no, no. You must be prudent with your words. Calling someone a good friend could easily offend them. Uh, but didn't you just say my dear friend in your example? Hyman's confused. Yeah. Yes, I did. But you must know in the Lawrence family... Dear friend is a set phrase that can only be used towards certain friends with whom one is acquainted, but not particularly close. I think I'm going to need a flowchart. <laughs> it sounds much more pleasant to call an acquaintance a dear friend. So, another thing to remember. Aristocrats are concerned with face and being polite. However, if you were to use dear friend to address an intimate friend, the recipient would think that you were deliberately trying to estrange them. You mean you have you always have to talk this way? This is only the first step in making a greeting. After addressing one another, 
You then exchange courtesies. Wait, wait. This is all too abstract. Um, perhaps it would be better if you gave some real-life demonstrations. Ah. Very well. Come with me. We'll choose some bystanders to converse with. Oh, I'm sure this is going to go fabulously. This is going to be great, I'm sure. Talk to the locals and observe the demonstration. All right. Hello, Norman. Oh, you're Eula of the Lawrence clan, right? This can't be good. <clears throat> you there, lowly laborer. You stand in the presence of a member of the illustrious Lawrence clan. I have words for you. You there, lowly laborer. Oh my god. Please acknowledge the glory bestowed upon thee by the nobility... Uh... What comes next? Uh... Oh, right. By solemnly kneeling to the ground with utmost sincerity. She's on her own. Huh? I can't make heads or tails of anything you're saying. <laughs> Hold on. What did they always teach me? Whenever a dispute arises, protection of your family's prestige and dignity always takes precedence. <laughs> Got it. <clears throat> As a lowly commoner, you shall maintain... As a lowly commoner. ...speaking with those under which you so graciously toil. How dare you speak in such a manner? Uh-huh. Uh, is everyone from the Lawrence clan so strange? Yes. The days of the Lawrence clan's tyranny have long passed. I don't care what you're trying to do. Just beat it. She's just giving us a demonstration, that's all. Like I said, I don't care what you're doing. I have nothing to say to any member of the Lawrence clan. And here's a word of advice. I wouldn't be caught dead walking too closely with any one of their like in Mondstadt. Ooh. If that's all, I'll be going. I'm afraid I won't spicy. be able to control myself if we talk any longer. Very spicy. Hey, hey! Don't leave! Uh, halt! Oh, mark my words. Vengeance will be mine! Oh, he's now on the vengeance list below us. Wow. The Lawrence name really does carry a terrible reputation. <sighs> Never mind him. I could have predicted as much. Let's find someone else. Okay. Let's find someone else. What do we got? Oh, this is another... Like, can't we talk to, like, nuns or something? Like, the church is right there. Like, not just randos off the street. Like, yeah, Jean or Amber or um, Kaya. Dude, I would, love to, I would love the Kaya. That would be hilarious. Um, oh, DeLuke. That would be really good, too. No, like, somebody who knows us? Okay. <clears throat> you there, lowly toiler. Lowly toiler. Of a member of the illustrious Lawrence clan. Oh, my God. I have words for you. Clee. Yes, Morkley. Agreed. Morkley. Please acknowledge the glory bestowed upon thee by the nobility and solemnly kneel to the ground with utmost sincerity. So stuffy. So Clee just thinks everyone's the best. I mean, that's true. Clee's adorable. <sighs> huh? Why don't you respond? According to the custom, I must wait until you kneel completely before I can say the next word. I must wait until you kneel completely. Ah, right. I mustn't look at you too long, or I'll be drawing more attention to our difference in status. Oh dear, I've already stared at you for quite a while. Klee is very young. I feel like she's young anyway. No, wait, she's not that young. I thought that we figured out during Klee's story stuff, or during some story stuff that we were doing, that Klee is not as young as she looks. Um. Fine. You may spare yourself the formality of kneeling, as it may be a little inconvenient. I shall continue. <laughs> oh, wait. I think there's a line for people with rude attitudes in this situation. Oh my god. This is excruciating. Hey, stop bothering me or else I might say something you wouldn't like to hear. Then again... I've got no words for anyone from the Lawrence clan. Again? What's with this attitude? That escalated fast. Yes, I don't think his attitude will change. If I keep grandstanding like this, the outcome won't be good. Let's try to find someone else to talk to. Hm. I'll 
remember your unwillingness to comply. Mark my words. Vengeance will be mine. Vengeance. And on to the vengeance list. Oh, she's 10. Okay, Klee's 10. So now we know. Klee is 10. Do we have to keep talking to the locals? Again, I feel like this is a bad idea, but... Alright, what about you, Randall? You there, lowly worker. I... Yeah, I've already heard it all before. Look, just spare me the time. Our answer's always the same. We've got nothing to say to the likes of you. I mean, seriously, can't you just take a hint? Please calm down. We don't want to cause any trouble. Ah, uh, I know she's a knight of Favonius, and that the knights wouldn't misplace their trust, but the name Lawrence carries too much weight with it. Even to this very day, the descendants of the Lawrence clan are still scheming to reclaim Mondstadt and reinstate their aristocratic rule. I mean, he's got a point. And if that wasn't enough, here you are purposefully using their awkward way of speaking just to put on an act. Don't you care for the feelings of us ordinary folk? You have a point. Thank you. But mark my words. This transgression will not go unnoticed. Again, unnoticed the transgressions. Huh? You want to fight? Listen here. I may be no match for you, but I'll be sure to lodge a complaint with the Knights of Favonius. Maybe everyone should just take a step back. I'm sorry, but I want her to understand that I'm serious. Listen here. If you don't want things to get more unpleasant, then you'd better just stop. Forget it. There's no point in quarreling any further. Let's go. <laughs> it's all right. This happens <sighs> quite often. Let's find someone else to talk to. No, let's not. Uh, Paimon thinks we've seen enough now. Let's just stop. Yeah, let's stop. Actually, Paimon thinks we should apologize for asking you to demonstrate for us. We had no idea the feelings between the Lawrence clan and the people of Mondstadt were so bitter. Accurate. <laughs> What can we do? The Lawrence name is already a dirty word among every household in Mondstadt. Even three-year-olds know the story. I see this kind of attitude all the time. I'm starting to sympathize with you. <sighs> Don't worry. What with me being a knight of Favonius, they're usually willing to speak a few words with me. Perhaps my aristocratic manner of speech provoked them today. Believe me, it's not a big issue. So this is the way things are normally for you? There's no need for them to direct their anger at you personally. I mean, Paimon's got a point. Especially if she's been ostracized by her family for joining the Knights of Favonius. Like, Paimon's got a point there. That's the way things are. Perhaps it's just fate for those who have made mistakes. Accepting punishment is only fair, right? But when your family has committed atrocities, I'm afraid there's no easy path to reconciliation. What kind of a statement is that? When your family has committed atrocities. <laughs> My goodness. As memories are carried in the city breeze, the faults of such grievances are passed from one generation to the next. It is now my turn to bear this burden. At least I have a means of living a relatively normal life compared to the elders of my family. I have nothing to be discontented about. So you knew all along we'd encounter these kind of problems. Yeah! Why were you so willing <clears throat> to try and demonstrate for us? Oh, that reminds me. That last person will not escape my vengeance either. Nula. <sighs> Let's leave it at that. Just think of it as something I like to do. But unfortunately, you probably didn't learn much from those conversations. It seems we have no other choice but to find more people to talk to. I... <laughs> uh, no need! Besides, the Traveler's pretty sharp, and nothing gets in our way on an adventure. Paimon thinks we got the gist of it now. Maybe. Uh, yeah, sh I think I've got it. We'll just have to roll with it for now. Let's just keep Eula from getting anyone else riled up. Good plan. Well then, I'm glad you learned something. You're already halfway toward mastering aristocratic conduct. <sighs> A proper manner of speech is more aesthetic than anything else. It stems from their taste for refinement. Uh-huh. But we must also practice your bearing. Okay. I have a very effective way of training for this. Come with me to Dragonspine. Dragonspine? Dragonspine? Dragonspine!
There are no stairs over here. Let me run up and down the stairs. We should keep moving. Am I gonna have to the fight the ice cube? I'd rather not. Uh. Well, if we're gonna play in in Dragon Spine. <clears throat> Oh, yeah. I'll just go ahead and do this. I got that one. I think that one is the one that I don't have. I don't know. I'm not going to do that. I need to make sure. Um. Weird notifications. Uh, okay. I have one left. I need to go and farm frozen meat. If you wish to truly achieve the dignified conduct of an aristocrat, you must learn to remain composed and elegant even amidst harsh conditions. For example, you can see that part of the path up ahead is quite difficult to traverse, but a well-trained aristocrat would not only effortlessly proceed forward, but do so without a stain on their garment and their elegance fully intact. Kaiman thinks we've left the realm of aristocrats and entered the realm of adventuring. I mean, we have. Compared to what we've already seen, this should be a piece of cake. Yeah, I'm used to this kind of challenge. Uh -huh. This is where you can finally apply some of your adventuring knowledge. Vengeance, the vengeance, gotta get that vengeance. Yep. <laughs> you look pretty confident this time. All right, let's get started. Remember, you must be graceful and elegant. Don't get knocked or launched into the air. That would be most unsightly. Okay. Reach the objective without being launched or taking any damage. Check this out. Yeah. That won't do. I took I took damage. Okay, you know what? I've got a plan. We got a plan right now. Hold on. Let's this one. I will protect you. Yes, you will. It'll be difficult at first. Remember, you must be I must yeah. leave no stone unturned. Someone needs assistance. Steady as stone. Ha! That's how you handle that. A lot better than I had anticipated, at least. Thank you, Noel. <sighs> Aristocrats. <laughs> Don't flatter yourselves. We've only just begun. This scenario was relatively simple. In the face of a real battle, one would seldom have a chance to stop and evaluate the situation. I was supposed to stop and evaluate the situation? There's a ley line monolith just up ahead that will attract nearby monsters. True elegance is the ability to calmly yet swiftly make decisions in the heat of battle. Is this how you normally train? My family set only the highest expectations for me, even as a child. Let's proceed, shall we? All right. Light line monolith. Okay. Someone needs this. Is the ley line monolith? Go ahead, activate it. All right. I don't want to have. I need. If I'm going to be fighting frosty stuff. Stay close, and you will live. I need to have my girl. Defeat the opponents without being launched or frozen. Uh, 
Oh, I see. Speaking of being frozen. Yeah, that's why I didn't use her at all. That's why I did not use Kakomi at all. Because I knew... Um... I knew that that well would done. cause a lot Your of problems. performance was most impressive. And you managed to remain calm even in these grueling dragon spine surroundings. <laughs> I'm starting to wonder if even I could have done the same. Look, this is why I have... food. Given such an outstanding performance, it seems there is little left for me to teach you. Like Paimon said, adventuring is our specialty. Uh, <laughs> so, that's it for our training, right? Then let's get out of Dragonspine before Paimon turns into a popsicle. <sighs> Hold on. I was commending the Traveler's performance just now. You, on the other hand, seem to have made no progress at all. Oh, Paimon. Uh, what? You mean Paimon was also part of the training? Yeah, because you're going to be talking to him. Yes, of course. You were frantically flying and dashing about throughout the entire thing. Not an elegant sight at all. Did you even listen to anything I was trying to teach you? Maybe that's just Paimon's style? Uh, hey! That's not true! Paimon was just focusing on you the whole time! Whatever the reason, not heeding my instructions. A cause for vengeance, perhaps. Another tick on the vengeance list. <sighs> now, drink this. Certainly not. It's warm milk. Didn't you just say that you were freezing? Drink it and it'll help warm you up. Oh, uh, thank you. Um, are you still planning on the whole vengeance thing? Yes. If I wasn't, then why would I care about you being cold? If you turned into a Paimon popsicle, that would ruin my plans for vengeance now, wouldn't it? I mean, she's not wrong. So, dear friend, don't die on me out here. Thank you for looking after Paimon. All in the name of vengeance. No need to thank me. Now then, given that your training is complete, it's time we return to Mondstadt. Our last step will be preparing a cordial gift to present to my uncle when you meet him. I already have something in mind. Let's pay Sarah a visit at Good Hunter. Alright. Go to Good Hunter to get the gift. Dun. Dun. The milk's past the best by taint. Take that, Paimon. It's the truth. Oh, hey, Amber. Oh, hey, Eula. I see you've met the honorary knight. We meet again, Amber. Seems we're just bound to run into you these days. Some frozen meat. Well, I just got back and was thinking about grabbing a bite at Good Hunter. But now that you're here, why don't we all eat together? Very well. It's been some time since we've last shared a meal together. Come, take a seat. We can discuss my uncle's gift while we eat. Okay, we accept the invitation. Yes? We sit at the table. Is there something else you'd like to order? Could you please prepare a serving of my uncle's favorite? Gebrotenness Fleisch mit Sauerkraut. We'll take it as a gift to him later. Well, yeah, Amber's somewhere on the vengeance list. You know she's there. Coming right up. <laughs> It'll take some time to prepare. I'll have it here at the counter once it's ready. Uh, hold on a moment. Is this satisfying salad also something that Amber ordered? No, she didn't order it. But because she didn't order any vegetables, I thought I'd throw in a salad on the house. You know, <laughs> to contrast all the meat dishes. There's no salad, so y'all need a salad. So, we clearly didn't order this. Yet you prepared it without authorization. <laughs> Mark my words, this transgression will not go unnoticed. Absolutely, 100% vengeance. Uh, you're gonna take revenge on her for giving us a free salad? Hm. You should know me by now. 
that's the kind of villainous character I am. Well, there you go. Well, then, please wait a moment while I get the dish for your uncle started. <laughs> Delicious unauthorized delicacies. Sarah will pay for this. She keeps using vengeance. I don't think that word means what she thinks it means. Why would you choose Gibrothinus Fleischmann sauerkraut as a gift for your uncle? Hyman's never even heard that dish before. This dish isn't actually on Good Hunter's menu. Only long-standing patrons such as my uncle would know about the dish. The old aristocrats seem to take a liking to it. Because of the sour flavor of the sauerkraut, not too many people are fond of it these days. I guess it's become less popular over time. Mm. Eula treated me to the dish once, and I couldn't even finish a bite. I've nicknamed it Gebratenes Fleischmitt Vengeance ever since. Ugh. There you go. I never expected us to have such completely different tastes in food. If I weren't in such a good mood, I'd say that constitutes grounds for transgression. And we've answered the question. Huh, so even Amber doesn't escape your vengeance. Of course not. It's hard to find someone in Mondstadt that attracts contempt as much as she does. So I've decided that the, the more vengeance she wants to enact on you, the more she actually likes you. <laughs> like, this weird inverse. I, uh. <laughs> it's fine when you're just joking between us, but I'm afraid our honorary knight might misunderstand you. Eula's always talking about vengeance, but that's just how she is. It's nothing you should take too seriously. But I am serious. And I'll remember every transgression committed against me. Ugh, it's no wonder so many people dislike you. Hyman's starting to realize that you is actually a very good person. There you go. There's no need to be so awkward when you want to say something nice. <sighs> Listen, you've never been labeled as a social pariah, have you? Yes. Yes, I have. But we're not going to get into that. <laughs> uh, well, no? So that's why you wouldn't understand how hard it is for a bad person to try to be good. It's impossible for me, and I have no intention of acting like a good person. All right, no need to look so sullen. I'm just kidding. Come on, let's eat. The food is getting cold. After an awkward pause, we all keep eating and enjoying our food. I'm stuffed. <clears throat> I'll see Sarah about the bill. No need. I've left the mora under the plate. If you try to settle it with her in person, she won't accept payment for the salad. Don't underestimate my ability to exact revenge. <laughs> Sarah won't get the upper hand this time. Wow. All right. Next, you should pay my uncle a visit. He has a small camp at the top of the mountain near Springvale. He usually whiles his time away there when there's nothing else to do. Uh, aren't you coming with us, Yua? I'm afraid that wouldn't be very convenient for me. It'd be better if you two went alone. Yeah, he would probably get really mad if she came, actually. Oh, yes. Please do remember to pick up the dish from Sarah. I still have more recon to do in the wilderness. Well, until next time. Let's meet again. What an interesting bunch you are. All right. Sarah, give me sauerkraut thing. The Bratinus Fleischmitz sauerkraut is ready to go. <laughs> be sure to eat it while it's hot. Otherwise, the flavor will be spoiled. And by the way, don't worry too much when Eula says strange things. She's actually a very good person. Uh-huh. Hyman's been meaning to ask. No one could stand the sight of Eula when she was trying to speak with the others at Mondstadt earlier. But she seemed to get along fine with you and Amber just now. What's up with that? The people of Mondstadt don't take kindly to anyone bearing the Lawrence name. They are unable to see past her family. Therefore, they don't actually see Eula for herself. Yeah, that's a thing. So no matter what Eula tries to do, it's seen as a wrongdoing. It essentially strips the meaning of anything she tries to accomplish. Uh, I think I understand now. How come you're able to see Eula differently then? Well, when she joined the Knights of Favonius, it caused quite an uproar. Many people signed a petition demanding that the Knights reverse their decision. At the same time, numerous members of the Lawrence clan crowded the entrance of the Knights of Favonius headquarters, clamoring for Eula to give an explanation. Oh, so both sides were unhappy. That's right. So you can imagine how determined Eula must have been under such circumstances. Yep. But thanks to Grandmaster Varka and the unwavering attitudes of others in the Knights of Favonius, they were able to quell the unrest. Tensions still remain beneath the surface, I'm afraid. In the eyes of the people, she's a stain on the Knights of Pavonius. 
and in the eyes of the Lawrence clan, she's a disgrace to her family. Gross. But she simply fulfills her duty as a knight, silently helping one person after another, myself included. People like Eula should be approached with care and understanding. She could stand to be treated a little more fairly. It's good that you're able to understand her. I believe a day will come when things will get better. Once everything's settled, we should go talk to Eula again. Paimon thinks we know how to communicate with her now. The sauerkraut is getting cold while we're talking to this I'm woman. Glad. I think that would make her very happy. Though, she might not ever admit it. Take care. Please come again. There's just meat piled up on the counter. All right. Well packaged, whatever. Head towards Springvale and look for Schubert. All right. Teleport. Da 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 da. La 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 la. Ooh, I should go through this town and collect mushrooms for ev the eventual reality of when I need to actually level up Barbara. But someday. need pine cones anyway. Alright, so can we talk about how, why is there a member of nobility literally sitting at a tiny tent in the middle of the wilderness? Like... The tent seems to be pretty tattered, but there's a really fancy chair. Yep. Ah, it's you again. I thought I had rid myself of you two. Uh... Please, if I may be so bold as to say a few humble words. A few humble words, huh? Yes, that sounds appropriate enough. Very well. I'm certainly not one to be narrow-minded. I'll overlook your previous misconduct for now and listen to what you have to say. It is an honor to stand before you here, immersed in your supreme brilliance. Hmm. It appears I have misjudged you. Supreme brilliance. The glory of the nobility that continues to this day. A true loyalist. Impressive. My intentions were to test your humility. It appears you have become well-versed in our etiquette. Oh, so he was testing us. Sheesh, what an ordeal. I'm glad she's literally not saying anything. Your conduct is satisfactory. I must say, such progress in such a short time is practically unfathomable. If I may ask, from whence did you learn such a civilized manner of speech? I refined my conduct with some instruction in the classics, courtesy of a dear friend. Ah, good. Very good. You are bright, and compared with the common folk I need to of give Monster, him the, you the, have the food, though. If you were of aristocratic blood, your prospects would be promising indeed. By the way, we brought a gift. Ahem. Paimon means we would like to present you with a small token of our goodwill. Huh? Could this be? Gebratnis Fleisch meets sauerkraut? It's evident that your sentiment is genuine. As a young person nowadays, only with no small effort could you achieve such a dish. Okay, then. It's been so long since I dug into a big, tasty... I, I beg your pardon. So good. What I mean to say is, since it's nearly mealtime, I shall partake. I would say, I mean, it's the middle of the night, but okay. And he relishes it. Ah, yes. This aroma, just as I remember it, and this exquisite sour flavor. Mm. A delicacy that only us noblemen and women could appreciate. Now even 
even Paimon's starting to wonder what it tastes like. Shut up! I acknowledge your genuine goodwill. Such sincerity must certainly imply that you come bearing a request. I don't know if this is the right way to say this, but... <laughs> Relish, sauerkraut. Um, it seems there's word that the Lawrence family has a grand scheme of sorts. Uh, wait, so you've come to know of this too? It was meant to be a family secret. I would like to do what I can for the nobility. Hmm. Well, considering your meticulous etiquette, you must be a talent of unusual fortitude. I am indeed. I'm willing to place my full trust in you. That's a terrible decision on your part, but okay. Please, come with <clears> me. <throat> we happen to be in need of competent fellows like yourself. Where are we going? To see some friends from a distant land. They have offered their assistance in restoring the Lawrence clan to its former glory. Is it child and I get to beat up child again? So he trusts us solely based on your etiquette. Perhaps this is what the old aristocrats see as most important. Well then, let's get going, shall we? You'll understand everything in due course. Either that or it's a trap and they're trying to murder me and it's not going to go well for them. Do you think his friends are the Fatui? Yes. If the Fatui happen to recognize you, what should we do? They're gonna recognize me. Observe this chair. This fancy chair really stands out in front of such an old tattered tent. Schubert must really treasure this chair. Only a true aristocrat would bother maintaining luxury items in circumstances like this. I mean, does he live in a tent? This whole thing seems remarkably ill thought out. What Fatui would recognize you? We kill all Fatui that cross our path. With the exception of a couple of the really big harbingers, which we have killed a harbinger. Uh, yes, we do. We kill all Fatui that see us. So, but I am sure that our description has been mightily circulated within the Fatui. Also, I need pine cones. <clears throat> also, it's down. Boop. Boop. Oh, there it is. Grab these calla lilies while we're here. All right. Mm, recommended party level 80. Be fully prepared before you investigate. Recommended water and cryo. Oh, and Scaramouche. That's true. Um, we have run into Scaramouche, and he he did not get destructimated. Like, Signora is whatever, because she's the big dead. But, uh, yeah, child. Child wouldn't... Excuse me. Tartaglia. Tartaglia probably wouldn't rat us out. He's he's a weirdy. Um, but we do kill all other Fatui, basically. Why have you put on a mask all of a sudden? It is only proper for aristocrats to wear a mask. By the way, can we talk about how... It wouldn't strictly a making a target so you didn't fight again later. That's true. Tortellini is a battle brother. That's true. Uh, also, this wouldn't hide... Look, look at us. This hides nothing. Also... Yeah. Okay. So, like, this... This is actually ridiculous, and I want somebody to call us out on it. It's only proper for aristocrats to wear a mask. Hmm. Even if they are powerful, our status is much higher than theirs in the land of Mondstadt. And therefore, we shouldn't allow them to admire our true faces so easily. I see. <laughs> it's your Fatui mask from the prelude chapter. That's right. Good thinking. Paimon thought for sure they'd recognize us. They're going to recognize you, you dipshit. Let's proceed, shall we? I'll introduce you as my guest. I'm sure this will be fine. As you'll see in a moment, there are many already helping us. Are there? I heard that this area had already been purged once by the Knights of Favonius, but it's the only place around Mondstadt that is well concealed and spacious enough. Pretty sure I purged it. Although it has fallen into disrepair and 
does not suit the tastes of the nobility, we simply have to make do for now. Uh, sorry. Um, can we walk any faster? Of course not. An aristocrat always moves with grace in his steps. Moving hurriedly is unacceptable. Here, now I'm an aristocrat. I'm a princess of the jellyfish. As expected. Uh, because we always see them around the city. Um, they must be very powerful. <laughs> huh. Nothing more than foreign ruffians with power and the ability to flaunt it. But they are favorable business partners. Hold it right there. Who's this? If you really must know. They're my guests. If you happen to offend them in even the slightest, then you will be held accountable by the Lawrence clan. Oh, he is so mistaken as to the power in this particular equation. But this matter is of utmost secrecy. We must exercise caution. You dare question the ways of a nobleman? I don't have time for this. Make way. No need to sound all high and mighty like that. <sighs> Fine. You may proceed. I mean, he's gonna sound high and mighty. They don't dare to question you. Of course, that is the benefit of prestige. Door of activation. Door of resurrection activated. Nobleman in such a manner. Right? No, Paimon needs to shut up. Oh, we're gonna get spicy here in a second. Such glory will return to me again before long. Yep. Nope. Spice is coming. I'm sure you have seen me before. And who, may I ask, is this? We mustn't bring just anyone in here. This is our new ally that I've recently met. They are completely trustworthy. You have the word of the Lawrence clan. It's a pleasure to meet you. Our plans are strictly confidential. It's not wise to bring in an outsider at this time. I mean, I guess he doesn't care about that, though. Furthermore. There's been word that an outlander who joined the Knights of Favonius has been very active in Mondstadt recently. I mean, I've been active all over the Fatui's plans. Don't be ridiculous. Besides, my guest is well versed in the etiquette of the nobility. I must treat them with the proper mutual respect. The How do I even Knights see through that mask? Favonius pay no regard to such details. They could never understand the intricacies of our etiquette. I almost feel bad. So let me explain. I almost feel bad because, like, he is obviously a mothballed relic of the past that is, like, trapped in the trappings of the past, right? So I almost feel bad for deceiving him because, for some stupid reason, he does trust me over the etiquette stuff. It almost feels bad. Like, to be disingenuous and then have somebody trust you like that? He's also an asshole, so almost. And what about <clears> this <throat> thing? Paimon! Uh, you mean Paimon? Why did you use your name? Enough! You dare question my word. Need I remind you who it is who has made your activity in Mondstadt possible? Without the support of the Lawrence clan, you would have all been driven out by the Knights of Favonius like dogs. You must immediately offer your sincerest apologies to my friend. Ooh. You offended their honor. I seek. No, nobody knows what a Paimon is. It's true. Super spicy. Fine. I'll take your word and make no further inquiries. Now, to the matter at hand. Did you bring the diagram of Mondstadt's defenses as promised? Diag- Oh my god! Oh, so that's what's going on here. Yes, of course. Here it is. Let me see. Huh. Why is it so poorly drawn? Everything's so squiggly and crooked. A and what is this shape supposed to be? Excuse me? I'll have you know that I went to great lengths to carefully draw this map by hand myself. That shape is the symbol of the Knights of Favonius. Ah, huh, I see. Crude, but I can make do. Are you able to verify that this is all reliable information? Can I kill this guy yet? Of course, you needn't worry about that. 
Don't forget what we agreed upon. The flag of the Lawrence clan will fly above the Knights of Favonius headquarters. The rights to that building, as well as the whole of Mondstadt, belong to the Lawrence clan. Yes, yes, we will both profit from this agreement. There's no use haggling over the details. We will make good use of the intel you provided. Also, be certain not to divulge our identity. There would be diplomatic consequences. I'm also now. I'm also gonna get, gonna put it out there that there should have been diplomatic consequences a long ass time ago. Do you know how many Fatui plots I have unraveled just in Mondstadt alone? Like there should definitely be a diplomatic problem. Like there should be diplomatic issues at this point. Period. For all of the zones that we've been to. Don't worry, this matter is only between you and I. And my new friend here. No one else will know of it. Once this is over, I shall stand atop the Favonius headquarters and rebuke their pathetic rule over Mondstadt. Then, the city and all its people will once again be under the rightful and unwavering rule of the Lawrence clan. He is so delusional. <laughs> Perfect. Just as it once was, and just as it should be. <sighs> May I remind you once again that we mustn't act rashly. That is all for now. Very well. Very well. Huh? What are you doing? The jig is up! And breathe. So this was all just a ploy to deceive me. Hundred percent. It's your own fault. Who would put so much trust in someone based purely on their manners? Truth. After so much planning, this is how it ends? Huh. We'll see about that. Oh, we need to get that guy. I knew I should have never trusted these foolish aristocrats. No matter. We already have the intel we need. Get them! I mean... They're running off in different directions! Hey, everybody! Rima remembers that this place is a dead end. Let's take care of the Fatui first and then deal with the da 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 I can't see your health, but that's okay. We don't need to see it. La 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 la. And out. Is there boxes over there, though? Oh, but the mm, okay. Oh, it's Eula. Hey, Eula. Uh, is that Eula? Don't touch me. Get out of my way. I'll leave on my own. It seems we finally caught up with you. This place is crawling with Fatui. Oh, it's you. It seems your investigation went well. Things progress much faster than we anticipated. Uh -huh. I see now. So you're the one that taught them our etiquette. And I thought you despised such pleasantries. I mean, I do. Furthermore, there is a rule in our family. Such traditions are never to be taught to outsiders. Ah, uh, yes. Rings a bell. So what? I had no reason not to teach them. You have brought shame to our family and ruined my plans. It's all for naught now. I know that you poured great efforts into these plans, Uncle. But you were well aware that it was not the right thing to do. As a Knight of Favonius, I could not overlook your actions. Knight of Favonius? Let's get one thing straight. I am your uncle, and you are a member of the Lawrence clan. You should strive to restore your family's glory. He needs to go to the big jail. You still have a chance. Defeat every knight of Favonius here and leave with me. Then I shall plead with the family to spare you and give you a new beginning. So just to be clear, you want a knight of Favonius to attack the knights of Favonius? I shall say this one last time. You are not a knight of Favonius. Again. You are a descendant of the Lawrence clan. It's right there. I should be able to reach up and just break his finger. The blood of the Lawrence clan flows in your veins. 
You must comply with the will of the family. 100% no. Since when have I ever complied with the will of the family? Yeah, no. Her family is top, probably at the top of her true vengeance list. 100%. Why, you... You unruly maid. If anyone should be angry, it should be me. As a member of the Lawrence clan, you knowingly plotted against the city of Mondstadt and threatened its safety. Had you ever stopped to consider the trouble it would bring to so many people? Had you considered how many enemies you would make trying to keep the plans under wraps? Y you dare lecture me? Yes, yes we do. That's right. In the name of the family that you so dearly revere, Uncle Schubert. I've never experienced the age of glory you always speak of. And I've never understood our family's incessant pursuit of it. That's right, Yuli, you tell him! But I am capable of discerning right from wrong. And I deeply understand what freedom means to the people of Mondstadt. The Lawrence clan should never and will never become what you've dreamed it to be. Oh, the disgrace of it all! How could such a rebellious monster emerge from our own family? Huh. Things are starting to get pretty hysterical here. Politeness and elegance seem to have gone out the window. That's enough fuss for Spicy! Time. You two, take him away. The honorary knight and I have other matters to attend to. And you are arrested. <sighs> Given that you've already taken action, I assume you've come across some conclusive evidence? The Fatui are in possession of a diagram of Mondstadt's defenses. Hyman took a peek at their diagram. Your uncle had mapped out all of the knight's patrol routes key information about Mondstadt. <sighs> and there was me thinking that he was just another elder of the family. And a lazy one at that. I never suspected he could stoop this low. So stubborn. Mark my words. Vengeance, vengeance will be mine. Let's discuss this later. Our first priority is recovering that diagram. Alright. Oh, now I'm Eula. Trial Eula. Okay. Crush! Okay, so that's cool. She's a Claymore user. Alright. I like her, um... Her animation. I like that a lot. Alright. So, we gotta go back through this way. More speed. A tap and a hold. Okay, so tap Four is months. this. And then hold E. Ooh, that's a big one. Okay. Cool. Oh. We're just gonna we're just gonna wait for a minute here. Our cooldown uses the stack to build the tab. Okay, cool. Oh! Huh. down <clears throat> so you build stacks with okay Makes sense. There, is no there we go. Two stacks, okay. Box. Alt refreshes the cooldown of her E. Okay. Yeah, I think we'll finish this and then I'll take my my three minute break. Like, I'm, I'm conflicted because on the one hand, I want to use her for this, and on the other hand, I just want to kind of blow it up. Shudder! You can't run! Well, we shouldn't get careless. Crush! Beg for mercy. Okay. 
Okay. It's not too bad. Oh, I like how he's just standing in it. Amazing. I didn't actually have to do anything. Fantastic. Oh, and then her Q. <laughs> That's good. I dig it. All right. More speed. Crush. It's not too bad. Uh, let's do. Her ult charges after you use it based on it. Okay. You know what? I need. There we go. Get some heals going. Okay. And then Fire it up. You can't run. Beg for mercy. Yeah, I can make it earlier by swapping her for less damage. Okay. It's just a question of getting used to, um, um, getting used to, um, claymores. I can't, <laughs> I've been doing so much work with, uh, pole arms. I'm not used to being so slow. We're just kind of peeking around to make sure there's no boxes. speed okay decent charge attack kind of like Beto's okay We will move on. Beg for mercy. There it is. That's where they put the diagram. That doesn't seem suspicious at all. Except that it does. Okay. Yeah, I kind of get it. And honestly, for a Claymore user, um, she's fast. She's fast for a Claymore user. Her uh, her attacks are not slow like it. most Claymore users. Well she feels fast. A copy of it. But without my uncle as their puppet, there'd be no use in them attacking the city. The Fatuya wouldn't have relied only on your uncle. True. 
But if their plan had hinged purely on taking Mondstadt by force, as opposed to with the help of a puppet, they could have spared themselves the trouble. The Fatui are dishonest, but they wouldn't go as far as to start an open war. Their opposition wouldn't just be Mondstadt alone. Uh, right, that's what I was thinking. Anyway, I'll inform the acting Grandmaster. She'll know how to handle things from here. By the way, why did you follow us here? Oh yeah, you suddenly appeared at just the right moment. Yeah, about that. Because you stole my targets by attacking the Fatui I'd been tracking earlier, I came to exact my vengeance. You tried to do my job for me, and I'm here to return the favor. So getting the diagram of Mondstadt's defenses was your way of exacting vengeance? Finally! After all this time, Paimon understands what you're saying! In reality, you sensed that something might happen to us during our investigation! You were worried about us and your uncle, so you brought a team to take a look! My purpose was vengeance. Don't twist the story. Humph! <laughs> Baka. You look too bright. But it turns out you have a knack for scheming. I do. And mark my words, I'll remember that. Okay. Hey, what do you mean Paimon doesn't look too bright? Uh, nobody tell her. You have seeded a deep enmity between us. Just you wait. Even if you were to be completely destroyed, I would never forget you. Does that make us your arch enemies? Bring it on! <laughs> I like your fighting spirit. I'll take this diagram back to the Knights of Favonius and take it from here. Sure. Well, see you around. That you will. And make sure not to steal my targets next time. She says she's bad when her ult can potentially one-shot anything. Well, and honestly, like, she's more tempting to me than Albedo in some ways. Just because, as we all know, I'm very... I like, I like charge build. Where you're swapping, like charge swap build. But I'm a physical DPS person, right? Like that is the thing that I I understand physical DPS. And yeah. Quest complete. Challenge complete. Dun, 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 dun. Not even support. He's off-field DPS. That it? That it? Okay. Well, actually, let's make sure. Aha! This is why we checked. Because there are boxes on the side. Anything over there? No. Okay. <laughs> Dun -dun. Okay. All right. I need to take a break. Like a little break. It should be three minutes. Might be a little longer. I think my mom called. So, give me a few minutes, and then I'll be back, and we'll do Albedo's quest. So, this is good. I'm having a good time. This is fun. So, I'll be back in uh, three minutes-ish. And uh, we'll uh, keep going from there.
I went over my three minutes by some, but I'm kind of in charge of this dog and pony show, so. All right. So. Next on the agenda. The rumored alchemist. Oh, look, more dragon spine. Shouldn't we just go over to the area of the boars and just get meat so that I can make more uh, goulash? I feel like we need to do that. I mean, we're going to have to start doing that anyway, because all the new story stuff is in Dragon Spine, and we're going to need a bunch of goulash. Um, and the only way to get the frozen, mo frozen meat is... You know what? We'll just do that. Before we go to see Albedo, if I can remember... Moving, but watch your step in the snow. I have to remember where. I think... I think it's here. I think it's here. Down here, I think. I think it's over here, where these frozen spots are. Yep, this is where it is. Okay. Okay. Check this out. No. Come back here. Flipping pigs. All right. I got to be careful about this since Okay. We're just going to do this real quick. Because this is what I did last time. Go over here. Because he's going to get all mad up there. Alright. There he is. Got him. Uh. And that's why you can't stand there. Because that's what he does. Hold on. He is enraged. So, we actually have to do a few uh, different things here. So, let's. I have a lot of onesies and twosies of food right now because I was mastering recipes when I needed to make food the other day. Hi, Hermes. Hi. Do you want me to eject otters so that you can sleep in the bed? Come on. Go on. You've been sleeping there for a bit. Come on, Hermes. There you go. There you go, honey. Go ahead and lay down, okay? <laughs> oh my goodness. And yeah, if he can't reach you. Which is why we're going to do something about it. So we're going to res Toma. First thing we're going to do is we're going to res Toma. Toma. Hi, son. I know. You can't sit in my lap, though. You can sit with me, but you can't sit in my lap. Okay. Second thing we're going to do is we're going to heal Toma. Third thing we're going to do is we're going to go over here and we're going to swap into our food. <laughs> All right. And now <clears throat> we're going to do, we're going to go down here. We're going to do shield strength. Uh, let's do crit rate. And jade parcels. All right. Run. Come on. Okay. 
All right, so. Yep, I knew that was coming. Toma, I need you to actually use your shield, please. All right, there we go, okay. He should not be able to do that when he is frozen. He should not be able to do that when he's frozen. I'm just saying, him doing that when he's frozen is bullshit. Like, that's actually garbage. Um, and I am d very displeased. Because that is actually trash. So, Ro is dead. Um... I'm just gonna leave before I party wipe. Like, I will literally just leave if it's gonna be a party wipe. Because... Oh, that's right. She's still dead. That's okay. That's okay. And we're about to freeze to death. Whatever. Take that, pig. <laughs> All right. Let's go down here to the fire so that we can not freeze to death. We got 15 seconds before we can ring Ro back to life. That's fine. We're just going to stand here and hang out for a second. <laughs> At least I got enough frozen meat that I don't need to do that run for a, a little bit. I, I know, Hermes. I know. Rotten boy. Um. Okay. So now we can bring Ro back to life. As we will. And then... We will just, uh, I could have just teleported to the Statue of the Seven. That would have been smarter, but, you know, whatever. Now we're good. All right. This camp has a cook pot in it. So I can just actually run right over here. And make some goulash. Do I have auto cooking for this yet? I mean, even though it's a suspicious dish of the same type, it's still an extra dish. So. Ah, I do have auto cooking. Let's do five of them. Suspicious goulash. There was some fall in the flame control during the stewing process, leading to a product with a very stiff mouthfeel. You can ignore those flaws if you scarf it all down. It'll keep the cold away regardless. Thank you, Hu Tao. All right. Let's go meet uh, Albedo, shall we? That's Rosaria. We're going to be talking to ourselves. Is this Barbara's hangout? I don't think I unlocked that. I've told you already, I don't go in for that kind of thing. I've got more important matters to attend to. Oh, but this event has commemorative significance. The church hopes that all sisters will be present. Okay. Hopes? That's odd, because I don't recall a fulfill the hopes of others clause in my job description. Wow! Okay, then. I it's sure, okay, Hermes. But... You're okay. Ooh. But what? You're the event organizer, aren't you? Do you not find it the least bit odd? What do you mean? This far out from Mondstadt at this hour? <laughs> Even if you set out right now, I'll wager you'd still miss the opening ceremony. Bye, Hermes. Who knows? Otter, you're Maybe a butt. Maybe this is someone's grand plan to make a fool out of you. Huh? Well, that can't be. People aren't like that. 
evidence decides what people are like, not your feelings. <sighs> Maybe you're a little too trusting of other people. Don't fret. Nobody's gonna blame you if you go back empty-handed. I can't imagine anyone else was delusional enough to think I was gonna show up. But if you dally any longer, you really won't make it. Uh, you're right. It's a very important commemorative event. If I'm late, then... Uh, right, I've gotta get going. Seems like that sister's an expert in making people believe anything she wants. I mean, Ro does have many talents. I thought I heard something. Who are you and why are you eavesdropping? Ro, you should know who I am. <laughs> We've been doing a lot together. We'd better watch out. She seems like a dangerous villain. Or a trickster at that. A dangerous villain. Oh, really? I'm a member of the long-standing Favonius Church. You're an eavesdropping pixie from who knows where. And you think I'm the trickster? Wait, she heard that? Paimon was whispering so quietly. And as for this outlander you seem to be following... Uh, huh. So it's you. The honorary knight that saved us from storm terror. Well then, given your status, I won't press you on your reasons for eavesdropping. Otherwise, depending on your answer, I could have arrested you on the spot. Uh, okay. What? Do the Sisters of Monsta have the authority to arrest people now? Ro is special. We can't go turning a blind eye to hidden dangers, can we? Why shouldn't sisters have a sense of justice? Hmm, that doesn't sound right. But Paimon can't think of a good comeback. I mean, that's true in many ways, Paimon. Let's talk about you. What are you doing in the mountains? Uh, we're looking for Albedo. If it's him you're after, I made a point of noting his tracks. Many people have made their way up after the snowstorm. Let's hope they're still there. So, are you also looking for him? No, this is just a professional habit of mine. I sensed elemental traces in these tracks. Never hurts to be vigilant. You're more like a detective. I couldn't care what you think. Come on then, I'd like to see what he's up to anyway. Rosaria said there were elemental traces in the tracks. They should show up pretty clearly with elemental sight. And now we shall consume our stew. Our goulash. Goulash. And... Oh, radish veggie. Forgot I made that. There we go. Huh? Oh, hey. Welcome to my hammer. Illusion shattered. Don't get too close. <laughs> I mean, I know I didn't have to kill them, but they were here. You know, little pixie, your ability to appear and disappear at will is very interesting. Uh, yeah? After committing a crime, you'd be able to leave the scene without a trace. You're so suspicious! Why is time on a criminal in your example? <laughs> Man, I kill a lot of Fatui, I'm just saying. And I am so excited for the new sets that are going to be coming out that are like 
better for like Kokomi, like the new artifact sets. I'm very excited for that. Um, Kokomi is like a honestly, she's like an integral part of my team. Like I use her all the time. She's kind of my clutch hitter. That way. It's getting colder and colder. Rosaria, aren't you freezing? Me? <laughs> I'm all right. I got used to operating in adverse conditions a long time ago. I love the fact that Paimon's like calling out the fact that Rose not really wearing any clothes. <laughs> Actually, before we run away, I should do that. Honestly, having Toma to do the fire for these things instead of Guoba makes it so much easier to keep the fires lit when I need to light, light fires. Like, so much easier. I'm actually probably going to do a big mountain push soon where I uh, go and find more red stones and all that kind of stuff. Hello, Albedo. Is that Albedo? Why would he hang around a place like this? The word on the street is he loves painting. He'll hang around anywhere for a good landscape. The views and scenery here are pretty good. Potential paintings everywhere you look. But can't he see those hilly churros? Isn't he in danger? Nah. <laughs> uh oh. Looks like we startled them. Enough talk. Let's take them out of the picture first. Yeah. Who are you? Why did you alarm them? It was an accident. Thank the gods I'd already completed my painting. Would have been a shame to leave these particular hilly churls unfinished. Thought you were painting a landscape. What's up with painting hilly churls? What makes them so interesting? Good question. Hmm. I'm afraid the answer isn't easy to explain. If you'd like to have a look at my painting, it may give you a clue. Mm, very avant-garde. Wow. Look at the detail. Some of it seems to have been done in a hurry. You can find these holy trolls anywhere. Quite boring, in fact. Not worth closer inspection. But take a look at this specimen. The build, the coat, and there's a distinct force at work here. In the cyclical lives of such primitive communities, such unique attributes are an indication of evolution at work. Evolution, the transition from nothing into existence, from the known to the un- it, Hold your horses. Ugh. Something tells me we're in for a thesis, and I haven't got the stamina. Uh, uh, can I just say that uh, Rosaria continues to be my favorite character in the game. And this whole sequence is just reminding me of how much I love her. We found your man. I'm headed back. What? Don't you have any questions for him? What a weirdo. So Sister Rosaria brought you. Surprising. And I didn't have time to thank her. But back to the point. From her words, it seems that you were looking for me. I was indeed. Mm -hmm. We met a girl in Mondstadt, Sucrose. She said you were stuck 
with your research. I see. So Sucro sent you here. Then, if I'm not mistaken, you must be the honorary knight. That is me. You've got the whole of Mondstadt talking. Do I? I've heard a bit of everything. Your actions during Storm Terror's attack, your elemental control, and quite a few other mysterious things. I am a mysterious person. I'll skip to the conclusion. There's only one possibility after all. You came from afar. From another world, correct? The only person that I have run into that connected the dots that actually said I'm from another world and actually knows that I am not from here. You are worthy of your scholarly reputation. Excellent. If I could procure your assistance, I think my research would benefit enormously. Your research? Uh, forgive me. This must be confusing. Where should I begin? Hmm... The essence of life? Whoa, whoa. You want to start with that? Hmm. That's a big You're ask. Right. Giving a demonstration would be better than trying to explain. For okay. Example, awakening life. Breathing new life into fallen leaves. You can do that? And my alchemy really is useful. However, I have a particular <clears throat> seed in my possession. The method I'm talking about has produced no results. It's like you, in that it hails from another world. Helping it to grow, to bloom. That's the problem my research is up against. That's where I need your assistance. All right. Well, if you're struggling to figure it out, Paimon's not sure we're going to be much assistance. I don't know, Paimon. We got some tricks up our sleeve. I beg to differ. I'm unable to comprehend the intricacies of life outside of the known world. But you're not from the known world. By observing and researching you, I may just be able to find a way to get the seed to sprout. So I'm an object of research. Uh, shall we just get out of here? This sounds a little freaky. Uh, what's in it for me? Mora, knowledge, <clears throat> and the answer to the question you are seeking. It happens to be an answer that I can provide. How does that sound? Time for a change of All surroundings. Right. We should be going. There's research to do. Don't forget your painting. Weird hilly churl painting. Is that Roe? Yes, it is. Hi, Roe. Albedo and that traveler seem to have hit it off. Takes a weirdo to know one, I guess. I wonder, does this constitute a risk to Mondstadt? All right. So, head to the test site. Test site's over there. Oh, well, I mean, I guess we don't really need to... I guess I could just do this. Check this out. I see you up there, Hilly Churl. Don't think I don't. Bye. All right. Continue this way. And boop. Paimon has a question. After the seed sprouts, will it grow into anything? That's a good question. I don't know. I'm sure he, yeah, he I doesn't know the that. The importance will lie in the method, not the end point. Okay. Using alchemy to awaken otherworldly life into that would constitute a big leap in my understanding of the essence of life. Yeah, it's not a bad argument. After awakening, <clears throat> even creation may be possible. Probably. 
It is a red just fine. It's going to be like a super mega ultra lightning one that's going to just wreck us. It's okay, Paimon. Don't think too hard. Still a little difficult to understand? Don't think too hard, Paimon. It's okay. No, Paimon's got a brain. But what's the seed going to become? Isn't that more interesting than whatever it was you were saying? It doesn't seem like you understand. Well, if it turns out to be a delicious fruit, dinner's on me. Okay. Hey, Paimon's holding you to it. I mean, hi, Mana. Hi. Hi, pretty baby. I know. I love you. Pretty lady. Uh, yeah, you've seen through Paimon's ulterior motives. Well, let's just say I uh, occasionally have to look after a child. Another lengthy explanation, I'm afraid. I suppose it's one of the few non-alchemy-related disciplines I'm any good at. It's probably Klee. The subject <laughs> of my first research was the elements. In this world, manipulating the elements requires probably a Klee. vision. Though I can't see anything resembling one on your person. That would be because I don't have a vision. How you're able to freely manipulate elemental power is something I'd like to ascertain. I've got a few questions in that regard. Why are we standing on the side of an ice mountain to answer questions? Firstly, do you have any extra organs? A second heart? A fourth stomach? Things of that nature. I have three stomachs? Why? What? What? No. Fascinating. And this floating child is connected to your body in some way? What a stupid question. Can't you see the gap between us? Child. I was merely considering the possibility that you were an external organ. Perhaps there is some invisible force connecting you. I caught Paimon, Paimon with a fishing rod. Oh, that rules out that possibility. I wonder, did Paimon guide the elemental power to you? So Paimon is the one that had me attuned with the Statue of the Seven. That was Paimon's idea. But that would mean that Paimon's elemental power would be enough to break through a mountain rock at least 10 meters thick. Or cause the waterfall south of Springville to flow backwards. Hmm. No, that definitely can't be it. Hey! How would you know anyway? Rude. In that case, it would appear that there's no obvious difference between the composition of your body and that of the humans in this world. Given that there's clearly a discrepancy in their research, it seems that only experimentation will yield the answers. Okay. Firstly, this mysterious elemental power. I'd like to examine exactly how it manifests externally. Let me lure a few slimes to the area. Perhaps you'd be able to defeat them using whatever method comes most naturally to you. I mean, how would you know if you have the same number of organs as them? That is true. I still don't think I have three stomachs to have a fourth feels a little odd. Huh? Doesn't seem very sciencey. Direct and clear observation are imperative to a good experiment. This is just a simple exercise. Naturally, if you require a greater challenge, we could bring in six oceanids. No, thank you. Slimes. Slimes are fine. Slimes are fine. Ch Paimon, shut the hell up. I do not want to fi fight six oceanids at the same time. As long as I'm not being batted around by hydro mimics. Well, Prepare yourself. The slimes will be here any moment. Uh, okay. Shine down. You can't run. I mean, I don't know. My brain has already forgotten how he pronounced it. So. I can't be. I cannot. That is not a question I can answer. Don't get 
<laughs> Get Toma's staff up a little bit more. He'll be uh, real, real good in ice situations. Do 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 do. Feel anything out of the ordinary? Nah. If you're injured, I have a few emergency potions ready. Just a bit cold. Excellent. According to my observations, the manifestation of the external elemental flow is as expected. Elemental reactions are normal. There's nothing out of the ordinary. Now that we know that the external flow is manifesting normally, let's test the internal flow. Internal flow? How do you test that? It's very simple. I can use alchemy to create a potion that will extract elemental power. Ah, oh, interesting. If the elemental power is stored or accumulated physically within your body, this potion may elicit an elemental reaction. Will it make my stomach swirl? Sounds kind of terrifying. Don't worry. In the normal course of events, you'd feel some temporary queasiness. No bodily injury. And in the abnormal course of events? If anything unexpected occurs, I've made the necessary preparations. Try not to worry. That's not hugely reassuring. Well, it's not that there aren't any risks involved. But if there is anything blocking your elemental flow, we'll be able to locate it with this test. Just a warning. If an internal elemental reaction occurs for any other reason, that's a bad sign. This is like a health checkup. Yes, that's an excellent way to think about it. Before we get started, the potion we'll use for the test is missing a catalyst. We'll need to find it. Worrisome. It's a type of ore known as star silver, but unfortunately not all of it is suitable. Is he a doctor? I'll take you to my campsite. We can gather some star silver ore on the way. I'll point out any likely contenders. All right. All going to plan. We should be able to begin concocting the potion when we get <laughs> to the campsite. Paimon's still got a few safety concerns, but... Seems like there's a silver lining. Let's keep our eyes open. All right, so follow the road. We need I will protect you. We need some Noel action here. Follow the road. Should do for catalyst purposes. Freezing to death. Uh. Oh, there's a teleport point right there. Hold on. Ugh. Ugh. Ooh. Okay. I didn't realize my food had worn off. This one, usable with a bit of polish. What luck. This should be enough. 
My campsite is just up ahead. I'll lead the way. All right. So we don't need Noel then. Right now. Take heart. Victory will be out. Look how look how sleepy he is. Work hard and live each Let's day jiggle. to the fullest. This jiggle is fat. That Doesn't is even move. Is all about, rawr, 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 rawr. Nothing. He is out. <laughs> all right. Um. This campsite is it up? Uh. Oh, it's off here. Okay. Oh, I've explored this place before. And I was like, the hell is this? I didn't realize this was his campsite. Oh, that's fun. This is my campsite. I've added the materials we collected to the concoction. While we are waiting, have a look over here. My assistant Demeas here is helping me with my research. I'm guessing you may have met in Mondstadt already. We have indeed. Hello! I've just gotten hold of the data from your experiment. The report is already up on the board there. Whoa! Look at all the data! You got all these results from one slime battle? <laughs> I wouldn't call them results. Inferences and a few daring guesses, perhaps. I think the most rational direction would be to expound on the phylogenetic relationship between this traveler and the slimes. I would have thought even Paimon and I were more closely related. Hmm, consider. You don't have a vision, but you can manipulate elemental energy. The slimes don't have visions either, yet they too are able to manipulate the elements. Following this line of thought, I'm sure we'll be able to establish a basis in fact. Mm, I know, you're a good boy. Not bad for a point of entry, but strictly speaking, slimes are elemental life forms. In other words, beings consisting entirely of the elements. A cryoregis vine, or even a whopper flower might be a better analogy. But tracing back the phylogenetic relationships between plants and animals, <laughs> you might have to trace back to the world's origins. In that sense, things might get difficult, don't you think? I mean, it seems like a bit much. Uh, yes, sir. That sounds correct. After all, we've got our primary data already. This traveler is a visitor from another world. If it turned out that she did have a phylogenetic relationship with this world... Huh. Now that really would be something, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Ah, it would. <laughs> Apologies. I was so excited to get the data. I'll slow down a bit next time. Okay. Speaking of data, to complete our research, we'll need some more. I'll be conducting analysis here for the time being. If you're keen for an update, just come and find me. All right. Great. I'll leave you to it. He's going to make me drink a weird potion. Huh. Looks like the potion's ready. I'll try a little first. If all goes well, I'll hand it over to you. Mm-hmm. In line with my expectations. Ready to drink. All right. Remember to keep calm at all times. And breathe deeply if you feel unwell. Drink the potion. A potion that Albedo made using alchemy. Despite its unusual cover, Albedo insists that the potion will work just as expected. Drinking it should not cause any adverse side effects. Tasty? You got a funny look on your face. It's burning a bit. You said you tried some already. You sure it was ready? What's happened to her? Hmm? Oh, this was the result I was expecting. <laughs> and a very positive one at that. Oh my god, really? This potion channels elemental power into the body. Under normal circumstances, a repelling reaction is to be expected. But if the internal elemental flow is unimpeded, you'll only experience momentary discomfort. 
Once the flow is complete, there won't be any other effects. So you knew you'd be sick and still drink some? <laughs> it was my own concoction, of course. Only natural for me to be the guinea pig. Out of consideration for the test subject? But of course. You're my assistant. By all sense and reason, it would be wrong of me to place that risk onto you. In conclusion, I'd say we have our conclusion. As far as elemental energy is concerned, you're no different from anyone else in this world. Nothing peculiar. Aw, Paimon wanted something cooler to happen. <laughs> then again, better an ordinary result than a peculiar result. Peculiar results have a tendency to be of the undesirable variety. I feel like you're referring to something in particular. The good thing about ordinary is that everything is an object of reference, and everyone understands you. People are the same, they can understand, empathize, encourage, and support one another. When you're sick, a doctor can diagnose you because they are you. When something goes wrong, you can ask people who've made the same mistake for their experience because you are them. Yeah, makes sense. But a peculiar person. They don't have much recourse for the things we take for granted. The essence of their life is fundamentally different. For example, a human can't understand the life of a pyro regisfine or an eye of the storm. Have I explained it clearly enough? Still seems like there's another layer of meaning to your words. To sum up, this has been a positive outcome. Going forward, you can use your elemental power without fear. Timaeus. The results of the new experiment are out. If you could see to collating them. Just a moment, sir. I'll handle it. Oh, you gave me a lot to consider. Really stretched my limits. I'm thinking a lot clearer now. Oh, having you down as an animal wasn't very precise of me. But starting with the premise of an elemental life form? Now that was... Not bad. I think it's an interesting line of inquiry. Whatever the truth of the matter... I'd like your research at the fore, as opposed to my judgment. Hmm. You can count on me, sir. I'll extract a result satisfactory to all. He's so enthusiastic. Is he trying to join the knights? He's starting to sound like a suck-up. A little bit. Uh, what Paimon meant to say was, that's the spirit. Mr. Albedo, say something. Paimon, you're the worst. Hmm. Before we can proceed with our research, I need to... Prepare something. Wait one moment. If you're right. interested, why not have a look around? It may help to pass the time. Okay. A shelf packed with books and potions. Looks like the owner has a habit of reading and researching potions simultaneously. Well, there's the hilly churl painting. It looks like an alchemy work table. Some potions and other apparatus are laid out here. Are these what Albedo uses to investigate the world? It wouldn't hurt to touch it, would it? Yes, yes it would. Don't touch things. A board with some incomprehensible experimental resort reports stuck onto it. Still, you can tell that progress is being made on those experiments. Here comes Albedo! Dun, 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 dun. Bag. I'm back. Did you see anything interesting? Your things aren't very organized. Hmm. Agreed. I'd love to find a moment to put them all in order. Still, experiments come first. That sounds like me. Well, on with the research. There may be significant differences between different worlds. Take Tevat, for example. Here, those with visions can manipulate the elements. But worlds may well exist where only one person is able to do so. Or even everyone. So, uh, leaving elements to one side. Do you possess any... unique abilities? Yes. Ones that don't exist in this world? Yes. I think answering this question calls for the same methodology as last time. In other words, time for the next experiment. Am I battling slimes again? No, no. 
You shan't be required to exert quite so much effort this time around. Now, see this pillar here? Use your willpower to try and break it. Mm, Paimon, you give it a shot. You think Paimon knows how to do that stuff? That was your best effort? Hmm. Well, can't be helped, I suppose. Uh, have you tried using your elemental power with food? I don't mean for cooking as such. Uh, rather, channeling your power into the ingredients themselves. I don't know why they gave... Okay. So this is a moment when it's a little annoying because... I know a very clear example of how we're different than everybody else, and it's the teleporting. The teleporting between all these statues that literally in their description say that the, the people who live in Tibet don't even know what they're for. Like, that is a power unique to me, and it's a perfect example of what he's asking for. So, like, we should just be able to tell him that. Because that's obviously a thing. I'm curious to see how the taste and texture respond. It may even help with proliferation. Are you sure you're not just peckish? <laughs> I suppose I have a curiosity for things that others find surprising. Anyway, why don't you cook us up a sunshine sprat? I've just finished preparing the recipe. Sunshine sprat. Cooking? Paimon was looking forward to more mad scientist stuff. Mad scientist stuff. Not only is this recipe a staple for me, it's also worth experimenting with and highly nutritious. Bits, you're just hungry. It does sound yummy, though. Okay, Paimon approves. Of course you do. I'll save you a fin or two. Mm -hmm. Good buddies are always on the same page. I'll leave you to it, then. Looking forward to the results. If there's anything left over, maybe Timaeus can finish the last morsels. Uh, Paimon doesn't think we'll have that problem. How are we gonna channel elemental power into the food? Maybe try the willpower thing again. Where does he get these ideas from anyway? Good question. Uh, let's just do it the old-fashioned way. Yup. There it is. Sunshine Sprats. He's a scientist at heart. These are solid questions. Sunshine Sprat. Gently fried fish dish. Okay. Oh, look, I have butter. Ha! Huh. Amazing. All right. Uh. Noel. Okay. That was fast. Looking forward to tasting, I mean, testing the results. Uh-huh. There you go. I'm a really good cook, so. Mm. An average outcome experimentally, but you really brought out the flavor. You seem well-versed in the science of gastronomy. I cook a lot. As far as the proliferation hypothesis is concerned, we've come up short. Seems like food presents the same headaches in your world as it does ours. Unless... Could it be that the natural laws of this world are limiting your unique abilities? I mean, a goddess did kind of steal most of my unique abilities. We just didn't know how to channel elemental power into the food. It's a little more complicated than adding herbs and spices, you know. Not to worry. At least we put some food to good use. No need to feel disheartened. And here's your portion. Enjoy. I can box it up if you like. Woohoo! Thanks! Glad you were paying attention. You're Paimon's new favorite. I can tell that you're good friends. Paimon was keeping an eye on you and your safety during the whole experiment. Not that Paimon would have been able to do much if things had gone wrong. But anyway. Roasted. Hey! You were being nice a second ago! Toasty. But you do have tasty recipes, so Paimon forgives you. <laughs> and you're right! We are good friends! You have good friends too, right? Good students? Uh, yes. I'm fortunate too, I suppose. Anyway, moving on to the next experiment. There are all manner of alchemical items here. Keeping them in their proper place is a challenge at the best of times. A while ago, I had the misfortune of misplacing a batch. Uh-huh. I managed to retrieve the majority, 
but two vials have been evading me. Animal crystal fly elemental extract and electrohypostasis powder. Paimon's barely finished eating and you want us to go gathering again? I mean, yes. Don't worry if you can't locate them. I was planning to replace them anyway. Though finding them would save me the hassle. If you had, say, a superpower, like night vision or vibratory sensing, lost property would be a thing of the past. I mean, elemental sight. I must have dropped them somewhere in the area where you were looking just now. So, guess we'd better take a look. There should be some elemental traces on the lost items. Oh, yeah! You could use elemental sight! There's one. This must be electrohypostasis powder. Oh, there's the other one. The extract of an animal crystal fly can only be animal elemental energy, right? This has got to be it. Still in one piece. Good thing the vial's so strong. Goodness. You managed to find them. Incredible. A thousand thanks. I'm wondering... This elemental sight... This is what allowed you to locate the items and find me here on the mountains, correct? Yes. Yep. Guess it does sort of count as a superpower, huh? Kinda, yeah. Unfortunately, though elemental sight is seldom seen, it is not unheard of in Tevat. Mm, okay. Only a never-before-seen otherworldly power would be of benefit to my research. You mean, we failed again? Rude. Don't be disheartened. This falls entirely within my expectations. Besides, getting these items back, I'd call this a very worthwhile experiment. I have to commend your deduction that the items would contain elemental traces. Right then. Up until now... Our research has focused on your otherworldly identity. Our research on your identity as one of us is just beginning. With you till the end. In essence, the differences between humans are reflected in our intellectual and physical capabilities. Let's start with physical. <clears throat> Looking out from where we're standing, can you see what Sucrose is doing? No. And if you jumped from here and landed on that cliff, the one over there, could you see her then? No. So what about if you planted a single blow on the mountain face here, and it burst into a million fragments? Then could you see her? No. Hmm. Then I shouldn't get too excited. <laughs> Still, we'll gain a more thorough understanding with an experiment. I know of a location that will be perfect for a physical test. Please, follow me. All right. Onward. All right. Keep an eye on my heat level. Just kind of make our way up the mountain. There may have been a path we were supposed to take, but I didn't take it. Get up to here. Light the fire. Grab that. Since it's literally right next to us. Climb higher. And here. You... You want us to jump? From up here? Yeah, sure, I've got gliders. Not necessarily. Not if you know of a better method, that is. 
We better have a better method. Whichever method you choose, the experiment will end when you reach the opposite shore of the lake. All right. I will factor the time expended and your top speed into my comparative analysis. The opposite side of the lake. So we're going to be swimming? Without limitations, we complete tasks intuitively using the method that seems most rational to us. Hi, Hermes. Some of us would be unable to stand the icy waters. Others might find the whole thing rather refreshing. Hi, son. Oh, move over. Shove over. There you go. Hi. Hey, old man. No matter what choice you make, it's all a part of the experiment. For me, every detail is invaluable to the research. This is my kind of experiment. Then if you would, please, I eagerly await the results. Okay. Wait a minute. While we're busy testing, what exactly are you going to be doing? Me? Recording data, responding to risks, providing uh, emotional support. Hermes. So if we do no, decide to go son. swimming, you going to dive in with us? No. Unless you're thinking of conducting competitive research? Oh! Uh, forget Paimon said anything. Great work. I've never seen a performance quite like it. Hermes is so grumpy. Your reputation precedes you, Traveler. The data shows that you're easily outperforming the average citizen in Mondstadt. But you followed us the whole way without breaking a sweat! Me? Actually, I used alchemy to cheat a little. But anyway, if it turns out that the natural laws of Tevat do not affect you, I should be able to make various inferences about the otherworldly civilization you belong to. He did say average. If the natural laws of Tevat do affect you, then I shall be able to make inferences into the kind of evolution that would occur under the absence of such effects. The innumerable possibilities that this could present, the captivating insights, it would be something to savor again and again. But how does this help your research? You've helped me to unravel many of the problems that were holding it back. When we return to the campsite, I should be able to show you something interesting. What else have you researched this thoroughly? I may be about to make some analogies between you and a few... unusual specimens. I hope you won't be offended. Old, petrified trees, a sun eight times the size of our own. The essence of the investigative process is enthralling, but such feelings are inevitably fleeting in nature. I'm willing to pour all my energy into research. And yet specimens are finite. As the unknown transitions into the realm of scientific understanding, the feeling of enlightenment is lost. He's all about the chase. All these things that start out as objects of fascination end up possessing the prosaic mundanity of a sunsetia or a sweet flower. They cease to be noteworthy. That's why you wanted to paint those hilly turtles? Because you got to see something new and interesting in the differences between them? Precisely. To quote my exact words from earlier, these creatures are, for the most part, quite boring, not worth closer inspection. Hmm. There is precious little about them that serves to pique my curiosity now. So after all these experiments, are we gonna be, like, boring to you? Like some basic draft of a sketch? And that's a fair question. Of course not. You have been of great assistance to me, and I will remember this friendship for a lifetime. Now, before we head back to the campsite, there is one more experiment. Intelligence. Follow me. There are some other ruins nearby. I have to solve a puzzle. Really? Okay. I found from my previous experiment, experience, that the easiest way to get to these ruins is to fling ourselves through here and ignore all of the monsters. 
<clears throat> Including this frost lola churl. Let me just kind of slip down a little bit and then. <clears throat> Oh, my food wore off. Try to watch our stam. We might as well grab this since we're right next to it. I imagine you must have encountered more than a few conundrums during your travels. That is true. I'd like to observe your intelligence by means of a practical test of your capabilities, much as we did for the physical test. No problem. I'd like you to explore these ruins and return with your findings. There are two puzzles located at the far ends of the ruins. After completion, you should be able to activate the mechanism in the center. As with the physical test, there are no restrictions. Everything you do is an action I wish to observe. Where there's a will, there's a way. Remember that this is a test of intellect. So should you get lucky in any way, that won't be factored in as part of the test. So, let's see you in action. Start wherever you like. Alright, so the first thing that needs to happen <clears throat> is I need to eat another goulash because my goulash is worn off. Okay, so... Got some ceiling stuff over there. Alrighty. It's a complex environment, so proceed with caution. Okay. Hmm. Okay. It's interesting. Sealy like these are a common sight in the mountains. Returning them to their rightful places is up to you. Here's the other one. Eating. <laughs> There we go. That one's done. I see another ceiling over there. So, cool. I've solved something like that before, so that's not too bad. All right, let's get this ceiling. There's one ceiling there. There's gotta be another one somewhere around here. There. Okay. So that's a. <clears throat> I need to go from that direction. So that's the thing that I notice when I'm doing climbing and all that kind of stuff that is slightly annoying. The fact that if you try to jump and glide off of something and you're in water, <clears throat> the animation will always immediately start you diving and you have to almost like interrupt that to be able to do it. And then it actually makes it. Um, Oh. 
I got distracted and uh, I found some friends. I have no idea if this is going to change the experimental results or whatever the hell, but um... We're trying to stop them from doing this stuff because this thing is bad. <clears throat> Angry flower friends. Da 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 da. Here's backup. Now, but where it hurts. I just realized that Toma is like actually dying. are very close to another adventure rank. Uh, we also are very close to freezing to death. So we're going to go back over here real quick. Take care of this problem. Stretch a little bit. This is a long quest chain. All right. All right, so we know what we want to do is we actually want... <clears throat> to climb up this thing. Which is not impossible. Hmm. There we go. Because I am ultimately very stubborn. There we go. What was that? It was like a roll? I've never seen one of my characters do that. Alright, whatever. <clears throat> wow, really? There is no escape. Oh, that. That is terrible. Can't get out of the water. Supporting fire. You know what? There's no tolerance. You can't run. Where? There it is. Get out of here. Seely, I don't appreciate that at all. <laughs> no appreciation for that whatsoever. Well, I don't have Tartaglia. It should not be possible ew. to activate the central mechanism. <laughs> All right. Exactly what will happen when you do is something I'm looking forward to finding out. Let's pop this. Get some heals because they're free. All right. <clears throat> Mm 
Mm. All right. Seems that the water level has suddenly decreased. We should be able to see what's in the water now. Let's have a look. What's this? I feel like I've seen these before. To the best of my knowledge, these belong to a script of some kind. They can be found all over Tavat, but they've never given up their secrets. There's still a lot to learn about them. And as for why they should ever have come to rest here, a true mystery. Let me make a copy first. I'll make time to go over them in greater detail after our research. <sighs> Another thing for the don't understand list. Unsolvable mystery this, weird experiment that. It'd be nice to get some cool results for once. It's okay, Paimon. I understand. Seems like if you want the <coughs> reward, you gotta pay the price. I've truly gained a lot from all this. Comparatively, the little reward I can offer is too small to mention. Let me return to the campsite first. By the time you get back, I may just have a fleeting miracle for you to witness. Uh huh. Okay. Otter. I take it I pass the intelligence test. Paimon's kind of looking forward to seeing the result of all this brain ache. Unless you can think of anything better to do, let's head back to the campsite. Not so fast. You're not leaving until I'm convinced that nothing dangerous is going on here. Hello, Rosaria! Uh, you! You didn't leave the mountain? I most certainly did not. And I've witnessed everything that you and Albedo have been up to. I must say, you let your guards down. Or maybe you were drawn in by his compelling sounding hypothesis and friendly demeanor. He has ulterior motives? Taking orders from a complete stranger? Drinking anonymous potions? Participating in all kinds of strange experiments? That's what we do here! I'd sooner believe you were tricked than that you would be so naive. Or perhaps you were colluding from the beginning. I was just helping him with his research. It doesn't matter what you think. He could be a saint for all you know. But I understand him a little better than you, Outlander. I'm only concerned with one thing. Whether his alchemy has transformed you into something more sinister. No way! Paimon would have sensed it! And anyway, he didn't even use any alchemy! With an alchemist of his level, you wouldn't sense a thing. In any case, I'm not about to let a potential threat back into Mondstadt. What are you gonna do? You came here to be sure, so you must have your ways of assuring yourself. <laughs> I've gotta hand it to you. You have your moments. If I can be sure that nothing you came into contact with is dangerous, that's good enough for me. I've investigated everything else. The only items left on the agenda are these symbols. But we don't even know what they mean. True facts. Hmm. That much is true. Not to mention... Seems like there's nothing more to them. But for insurance purposes, I'd better make a copy. <sighs> this is now a location of interest. Regular patrols should be set up here. Now then, all things considered, I deem that you pose no immediate threat. That's good, because we're all freezing to death in this hole while you're staring at us. Which is what I was hoping. I would have been one very unhappy sister if you'd made me work overtime on your account. Over time. Before we go our separate ways, Outlander, a word of advice. Don't be so quick to trust Albedo. And don't repeat the same mistakes that you did this time. You made a lot of rash decisions today. She's got some spicy history with Keep Albedo. Going. So stubborn. She's definitely got some spicy history with Albedo. Mindset doesn't have many people like that. Maybe she's just sensitive. Huh. Never mind her. Let's go see Albedo. All right. Return to the campsite. We shall return to the campsite. Clearly he missed a date night to research, right? There's some rage going on. We are spicy. Let's see if we can get this quest done, and then I'm going to take my lunch break. Because lunchies. Lunchy tasties. All right. Talk to me about your weird results. Good timing. I've just about reached the conclusion. You took quite a while. 
Did you get held up on the way back? Quite literally. By a sister, no less. Uh, I wouldn't worry. She's just doing her job. Time for the results. We got a myriad of data today. And it was very difficult to finish all the research in one go. But the integral preliminary conclusion that I can offer you is... You're very much like a human from this world. That's it? You couldn't tell that just by looking? We spent all day working our butts off for that? Please, I understand that this may have seemed self-evident to you. But in fact, nothing in this world should be taken for granted. Have you ever considered that the world of Tevat may have a natural hostility to outlanders? Only the gods would know. I mentioned the natural laws of this world. You're able to converse with me here without consequence. And nothing seems amiss. But it's arguably a small miracle. The only other life form that, like you, has come here from afar is the seed that I mentioned. Under the effects of Tavat's natural laws, it isn't even able to sprout, let alone bloom. But after I observed you, I had another idea. Imitating you helped to inspire my alchemy. And so... The transition from nothing into something, from shoot to stem, and now to fruition. Is not nurturing otherworldly life also nurturing the world itself? Aww. Okay, so here's the problem, though. That would be an invasive species, right? Like, there's a reason that invasive species are such a big deal. Because if they're out of their natural environment... They're very hard to control. Um, so trying to make an, an, invasive, an invasive species bloom is probably not the best plan. Uh, it was beautiful. It would seem that that's as far as we go. A transient bloom of incomparable beauty. Life's proudest achievement. I mean, it's symbolic with all his testing on helping. I mean, yeah. Hyman thought with all our efforts, it might have bloomed forever. And it didn't even have any fruit. Life is a manifold tapestry of free entities. Its value shouldn't derive from how long it stays with us. Even a momentary burst is precious. A short life can be well lived. A life lived efficiently, lived to perfection is necessarily one unburdened by loneliness. So, do you understand what I meant about us conversing here arguably being a small miracle? I wonder how my brother is. Uh, things feel a little heavy right now. <laughs> Don't be sad. You've got Paimon to look after you. Albedo, Paimon really wants to be your friend. Thank you both. Even if dispelling loneliness is not essential for life, it certainly doesn't hurt. Your help inspired me to discover the means to make a flower bloom. So I'm a helpful specimen? I mean that the time I've spent traveling <laughs> with you in the mountains was a valuable journey for me. In the future, if the need arises, can I solicit your help again? Sure, even if you just want some company. Find me anytime. Well, glad I can count on you. I made a point throughout of telling her how ordinary the results were. But what was that sediment I saw forming at the bottom of the vial? It should not have been there. What could it mean? Those born of earth are bound by its imperfections. But those born of chalk are free of impurities. You and I are alike. Both composed of a substance that has yet to be fully defined. Hmm. If, one day, I lose control, destroy Mondstadt, destroy everything. Can I rely on you to stop me? Hello? Um. Um. Excuses me. Excuse me, please. What? <laughs> Albedo, what? <laughs> Albedo, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Okay, well, I'm glad we did these before a new patch comes out. 
so that new patch story isn't like super shocking. Um, <clears throat> not fine. Super not fine. That's an oh no. That's a big fat oh no. Uh, also, we got another adventure rank with a mask. Let's see what our mask is that we got. And then I'll take my break. I mean, he's very sus. Wow. I was not expecting that. Okay. Um, new. Defense percent. And attack percent. Nah. Nah. Not the worst. My one fire, my one fire hat that has defense percent, percent, attack percent, and HP percent, and crit ray. <laughs> my one fire hat. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. All right. All right. It's lunchtime. We gotta have lunch. Lunch is important. Um, theoretically. Uh, I could come back and we can do the other two things I have unlocked, which will probably take like all of the stream, uh, which is Zhao, um, and Hu Tao. So that might be fun to do Hu Tao and Zhao. Um, we have a key, so we could also do like the Raiden Shogun. Or Ganyu or Tartaglia. Um, but I want to get the other ones that I haven't done yet. Done. Because I think that that's a better... Yeah. That's better. Oh, and I've been doing this Tatara Tales because this is literally like a daily thing. It's just like the, the Mist Island where you have to do a section and then the next day you have to do it. And then the next day you have to do it. Look. I could do Tartaglias to get it out of the way. Or I could not. It's like a week long too. Yeah, no, I looked it up and I was like, are you kidding? Oh my god. <laughs> so, slow but sure. Eventually. Alright, anyway. Let's, um... Yes, 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 yes. Alright. Um... So... We're at 46. We still have a bunch of the weeklies. Um, I would say that I'm probably going to get to 50, um, before this time is up, because I don't have that much longer to go. Um, we are very close. So, conch shell, little game near it that you should do daily. Conch shell game near it you should do daily as well for a week. Yeah, I still have four tw forge 20 items and, uh, make 20 dishes and... Like, well, I don't, I think I did the make 20 dishes, maybe. Yeah, I did that. But I haven't done my requests. Um, I haven't finished my trounce domains, like, and the trounce domains, like, that's a lot. So I definitely, I definitely can get this. This is not a big deal. I mean, I'm going to have to do this anyway to finish leveling up my staff of Homa. Anyway, none of that has to do... None of that has to do with the fact that we are taking a lunch break right now. Because we're taking a lunch break right now. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to take a lunch break. We're going to be back in an hour-ish. Um, and then we'll probably do more Genshin. Just because it's been very relaxing for me today. And that's what I've needed today. So we'll probably do more Genshin and do the other two quests. And then fill the time with whatever else. So. Um, get your lunches. Stretch your legs. Uh, do your things, and then we will be back in an hour. So, have fun, and we'll see you in an hour. Cool? <laughs>